if there's anything that someone said to me, you know, what is something that you taught your sons? It would be independent thinking. It would be, you know, stop listening to people that you don't even know the evidence of what they got from their thinking. You know, it is, it's like there's people out there in the world that are writing relationship uh, books that have never had a successful relationship. Uh, you know what I mean? So we just live in a world today that I just, um, you know, if there's certain things that you feel like you need to know, then you got to sort of trust yourself. Welcome to episode seven of the podcast, Unlimited Wisdom with Robert Hollis. I'm Craig A. Jackman, along with Matt Hollis, and we are so glad to have you with us today. Gentlemen, very excited to see you and very excited for this podcast. Yeah, well, me thank too. you, Craig. Dad, do you want to go ahead and share anything before we get into it or? Nah, it, it's like I just, I really, have, you know, watching a lot of the podcasts that are out there, it's like, uh, you know, it's it's very unique for me to watch people immediately just go into whatever topic that we're going to talk about. And it just, it just goes from there. There's so much in the, there's so much in the world that, that, you know, we all can talk about, you know, so it, it, yeah. it's like, uh, and, and Craig, what was the subject again? You know what? I, I think Matt, it's, it's was, interesting. I threw one out there, but yeah. as funny as it sounds, I'm like, wait, I don't remember what I said. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Let Gotta me love see. the start of a podcast where <clears throat> everybody knows what we're going to talk about. <laughs> well, right. Hey, hey instead see, of coming what's... up with the subject, you know, we, we can talk about just whatever. So that, well, that's think, what's right. so great about this is the fact that it's organic. Yeah. And that, you know, we can get subjects. We can talk about things and all of a sudden the subject develops or like Matt threw out earlier is, you know, there, here is the subject. And of course this was two days ago before the recording of this. I've broadcast. got it now. I've got it now. And, okay. Here we go. I'm just How trying to, to discover your time. purpose was the, was the, was what I was kicking around. How to discover your purpose. Oh yeah, my gosh. Because yeah. Uh, that yeah, could be a big one. One. <laughs> one of the things that I think that has been very good about our podcast and, and me watching other people again, I know we're just going to be us, but it's like, uh, you know, in general, I, I was, uh, me and Matt were talking before this and, and this is the thing that I think we should bring up and, and I'm gonna, so, <laughs> but one of the things that I find again, so if you haven't watched some of our other videos and other podcasts is, um, I'm confused why people think that we shouldn't have difficulty communicating. Um, because as we brought up in other places, it's like words, you know, so, you know, not only are all of us unique with our own DNA and our own environment and our own schooling and our own backgrounds and all these experiences that happen to us. But, um, me and Matt, were talking about Craig where, <clears throat> you know, people right now, whatever they're doing, it doesn't make a difference what they're doing. So, you know, they get into a little of imagination and then as they imagine, then the first thing they need, they think, they think is I got to learn. I got to learn all of this information. And so people just get caught in this cycle that they don't think they know enough. So they just keep learning and, and keep learning and keep learning and keep learning and keep learning. And it's our self doubt and stuff in our head that always believes that even if we start working a little bit, oh my God, what if I do this wrong? And if I do this wrong, then I'm wasting my time. And if I'm wasting my time, I'm doing this because I wanted this as an outcome. I wanted this as a result to that. And so me learning how to do it is more important than doing it. I got to become uh, knowledgeable on all the stuff it takes to do this business or whatever you're building, a community, or if you're building an audience online, of subscribers or whatever. And Matt and I were talking about this and, <clears throat> and it's neat because we can pull it out because learning basically is a word that everyone on here would probably have a slightly different perspective or a definition of that word. But Matt brought it up right away. So we're told in school how important it is to learn. Mm -hmm. And learning is really getting down the information so I can make sure to pass this test so I can get a passing grade 
to move on. So we've all made this joke and I have, maybe you have it, but you know, there's stuff that I learned in school that have absolutely nothing to do with my life. I've never applied it. I've never used it. And people could get mad at that, but you know, man, I love math. So I was good in algebra. I was good in calculus. I was good in geometry. I, I'm, I'm, that just became so easy for me. But yet I was evaluated by my grades on the things that I sucked at, like spelling, writing, reading. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't care if you're a savant or on the spectrum in this subject. It's this subject that, you, that you're going to be graded on. And so now you get out in life, right? And you don't know anything about building an audience with YouTube or someplace on a social media. You don't know how to monetize your life. You don't know how to do these things that are available for other people. So right away, people want to learn. But here's the problem. If you learn something and you don't put it into action, there's no results. So what we were taught in school is to learn something because that's probably going to be on the test. And then once we can dump that knowledge or that memory really out on a test, that gives us a grade and there's no reason to use this piece of information for the rest of our lives. So now people go to seminars, they buy books, they buy tapes, they buy, you know, they buy all these things to go learn how to monetize their life. And at the event, it could be exciting. You're around other people that are risk takers, great camaraderie, uh, great community. You find a bunch of people that e have equal uh, uh, beliefs and stuff. So that's fun. You go out to dinner with them or decide to go party or do whatever you do with them. And you're jacked up and you're excited and, and you know, maybe a great experience. Then you show, get on the plane, do whatever you're going to do on Sunday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. And then you get up Monday and you don't apply any of it. So my definition of learning is when you change your behavior. So my mentor taught me, Robert, listen, um, <clears throat> you're not going to accomplish anything of greatness without the service of many. So you need to find a way to communicate with many to get them to know, like, and trust you. And this builds a community. And what I see right now everyone's struggling with is they feel like they need to learn something. So then right away what they say is, I don't have time. I don't have money. I, I, I'm i not good at technical stuff. Well, of course you're not good at technical stuff. You're probably not good at playing darts. You're probably not good at bowling. You're probably not good at dancing. You're probably not good at talking another language because those are other things that you haven't put time in to practice to get gooder and gooder. And so, you know, it, it, I just find it very interesting that, you know, a lot of people that might be following us, you know, uh, in, in Unlimited Wisdom and imagine Imaginators, you know, when you get into an imagination state instead of a learning state, it actually puts you into action. So you see a bunch of people that Matt shows them a little stuff with AI. So they create one image and they create another and they go, oh my God, I like this. And now they're on a creativity scale of, and, and it's measurable for them. That's what I love is that you, you did your best to describe what you would like in a graphic and you put it into a program and it spit this thing out. And then maps taught people, well, you know, say you want to clear this and, you know, make sure you get better on this. And before you knowing they're posting a graphic and all their replies are comments and shares is, oh my God, this is flipping amazing. And so that's learning. So a lot of people on here might have a definition that learning really for you is, um, hearing new perspectives, new opinions, uh, new paradigm shifts, uh, uh, just new knowledge that is not learning. And it's okay to be educated. 
And it's okay to learn, not learn, but be entertained by someone giving you information. So that's why people, I believe, are caught in this deal where their inner voices and other things are saying, you're not good enough, you don't know enough, you're not great at this, you're not doing this. So then they get this information, they get this emotion, they get all these aha and excitement, motivation, inspiration from stories, but then that's why they show up Monday and it's like, shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> so nice, nice I, I think that's a cool way. If everybody thought, you know, if I thought that buying a um um uh, bowflex is going to get me in shape i just missed one principle of it that's actually being on it for 10 minutes a day to turn that into 20 to turn that into 30. so the way i buy a bowflex is the way i think that other people buy books by life coaches, you know, if a life coach or a therapist tells you, well, listen, if you're struggling with doing this, maybe try this. Trying means attempt to do that. Attempt to use the breathing techniques. Use the things that you need to do to get you in a different state. Now, uh, I'll do that when I have the next panic attack. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's normally like in the middle of it. You're like, why didn't I do that thing that I was supposed to do? What the hell was I thinking? I mean, I'm yeah. hearing right here Master Yoda in my head saying, do or do not, there is no try. In other words, okay, how to discover your purpose? Do it. Just And yeah. you even share this all the time, Robert, with our inner circle group, our imaginators group, and uh, just on any of the Ask Me Any things that we have is – Okay, is this what you want to do? How do you feel? And Abraham Hicks talks about how do you feel? Do you feel good? Do you feel good about doing this? Then do it. it and take the baby steps, step by step. You've even shared even in doing meditation. It's, you right. know, okay, yeah, your mind, you try to focus your mind. You try to get yourself to not think. Damn it, I thought about it. Shoot. <laughs> okay, so try it again. Okay. Okay. Now I went th th uh, two minutes and I didn't, I, I cleared my mind. Oh, shoot. After two minutes. No, that should be the success because you went two minutes. Okay. Now what's right. the next step? Three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. How do you feel? And you've always said baby steps, at least if you start, what, what is uh, Lao Tzu says, the journey of a thousand step, uh, a thousand miles, always begins with a single step, yeah, or something to that effect. Yeah, I mean, you got to start and you got to do it. No, oh, yeah, I, I mean, I think in a lot of ways too, like people stop themselves from ever getting started, like you guys are saying, to just the way that they like the way that they're visualizing doing things normally is like negative and i can attest to this because i've done it myself where you're like seeing anything that you're doing is like this very large like uh hurdle that you have to get over right you're like once i do these things right so you know it's summer's coming up and and it's now time for me to start exercising again right because i'm like well i want a summer body you know i I've, I've gotten a little less in shape as the years go on, right? The more that I've done this stuff on the computer and everything. And so I'm like, it's time to get in shape. What does that require me to do? Right? Start. Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways, it, it, there's always that, that aspect where I'm like, well, I need the right weights or I need the right gym or I need the right day or I need, I need the sunshine yeah. to come up at 545 or whatever. You know what yeah, I mean? To get started, of right? reps. I mean, is it, is it heavy with re less reps? <laughs> <laughs> or is it, you know, little way well, with a lot. That's the learning, like, right? Oh, because yeah. People will then say, they'll go, okay, I need to learn. I need to learn then before I can get started. And I think what ends up happening is then you're in, you're just stuck in learning, right? You're watching all these YouTube videos. You're going through all this shit just so you can like figure out how to get started. When the reality is, I feel like in a lot of cases in my own life, um, it, it had so much to do with progress. And me and my dad were talking about this before is it's not learning, it's progression. And like, as you start 
to trust yourself more and go, I've made more progress today on whatever of who I am than I did yesterday. Yes. There's not really like a necessity for you to constantly put yourself in this state of learning, right? Because that leaves no time for what? Reflection. Like learning and re learning without reflection is, is kind of useless right? I, it's just as useless as not implementing it, right? Because not only do you have to learn it and implement it, but then you have to, I mean, to be honest, you have to be consistent as far as exercise and stuff goes or else right. nothing happens. You know, if mm -hmm. I learn how to lift weights or do a certain exercise that will help me, but I do it once and say, great, I did it once, but I didn't get the results I want, which is like one of the biggest pains with exercise, right? Me and Hannah were saying this the other day. We're like, if it was as great as like you just go lift and then you go over to the mirror and you see immediate change, instant gratification, everybody would be working out. They, they'd right. go, oh, my God, this is like an easy thing to do. But we all don't because we have we, we're all aware that to get into shape, it requires lifestyle changes. Why is anything else different? You know, mm -hmm. and you can take it from ah. exercise to anything. But That's I'm noticing nice. in myself taking that little shift from going from I'm trying to learn, you know, what my purpose is. I'm trying to learn um, more, trying to figure out what I want to do, just changing that to am I making progress more on the person that I want to be? Yes. Great. Yeah. Then I, okay. I, I'm doing better. So now let me ask you this question. Is it something that you like to do? Yeah, I mean, I think isn't that an certain, important question to ask on discovering your yeah. purpose? For certain aspects, because there's certain things that people want to do in life that require you to do some things you don't like to do. And that's right. the way that it is, right? Um, if you were to write a book right now, right? And you were to go try to publish it, you would have to work with people. Mm -hmm. An editor, a publishing house, maybe marketing teams. Yeah, if you wanted to start your YouTube channel right now and grow it. You're requiring the efforts of a community and people to watch you so you can make an income off of it. So in a sense, um, you know, not everybody goes out and goes, I want to make content so I can build a following or a community that I can interact with. There's creators out there that don't do that at all, right? Right. There's creators out there that just go mm -hmm. here, content. I don't want to interact with you guys at all. The next time you'll hear from me, you know, like a lot of musicians are this way, right? The next time you'll hear from me is when I have a new artistic endeavor to talk about. But outside of that, you won't hear anything from me, jack shit from me. But I think we we constantly, <clears throat> myself included, put ourselves in these situations where we like put the carrot on a stick as far away from ourselves as we can. So then it, it makes this excuses easier, right? Like yeah. I think more than anything, it just makes those excuses easier. Why didn't I do this shit to progress myself today? Well, because I didn't do all the other things I'm supposed to do before I can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So once I get done with those things, then I can do it. So but I remember you, you hearing, know, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I remember one time again, when I start, we start out some of these podcasts, I really ask each and every one of you again, if you really, really said, all right, this is my definition of purpose. Again, how uniquely different that would be from everybody else, because we all know there's areas of life, right? So, you know, there could be a purpose and you can definitely see people's purpose and even slash their passion. You know what I mean? And it might be all on a physical ability. You know what I mean? So Michael Phelps can win as many gold medals as anybody in the world, you know, because his passion and his purpose was to be the best swimmer he could be. Well, this might make him not have a purpose in his personal life or community or a relationship or how does that equate into other than endorsement, building your financial legacy? You know what I mean? So, you know, so when people just say the word purpose, you know, sometimes they mess that up with a thing called calling and, and that could be as basic as, um, me asking everyone that watches this, you know, what do you want? What do you truly, truly want? And I'll tell you why a majority of the people on the planet say, I don't know. I don't know. Because how do you put this purpose into every part of your life? So if you're coming from it from an organized religion side, 
this should be your purpose. But if you looked at it at what's your purpose as building a family? Oh my God, wait a minute. You asked me what my purpose is and now you're saying I have to have one in every area of my life. Uh, that would be smart. That, that would <laughs> I be think that's smart. why most young people take a break from it for a while, right? It's like, I'll do this in pieces, right? I'll, I'll get an education and then I'll get a girlfriend or a boyfriend and then I'll get married and then I'll have children and buy a house. And yeah. so you like, you have to like compartmentalize it. I was joking with my wife because me and her always tend to just do like five of those things at once. Like that's mm -hmm, normally yeah. the way we like to do things. So we like met each other and then a month later got married in Vegas. And then it's like, <laughs> it's bought it, got a new car, got us ourselves a car, got ourselves a place together, moved in together. Of course it's like, Oh yeah, we just like doing all this shit at once. But, um, even watching my younger brother, cause he's in Japan right now. Right watching him step out of his comfort zone and go after something that I know he's wanted to do his whole life, which is visit Japan. Right. Yeah. And he's sending us pictures. He's there for a bit, but he's sending us pictures every single day and we're all talking to him and it's just fantastic. Like fantastic. Like I really do go to bed at night thinking of how happy I am for my younger brother that he's actually me, mm -hmm. me too. He's my son. It's like, amazing. I know. And it's, it's great. And the thing is, is that that shit's contagious. Like it's yeah. so contagious. So like what ends up happening is like he starts doing things that he wants to do. And then I go, why well, should be doing things that I should want to be doing? And then Hannah goes, I want to be doing and then you and Craig. And I think that that's how you kind of change the way things work. Right. Is like you have right. to go through that process. Well, and here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. You generally in life will find out the things that you want or gives you pleasure or gives you pain, whatever you do that by doing. It's mm -hmm. like it, it like I see the most of the world, like if you're going to train someone and this is analogy, maybe some of you don't get it and and that's OK. But let's say that you're going to teach somebody, <clears throat> you know, how to be good with firearms. Because they and using them the wrong way, they can be very, very hazardous to your life or somebody else's. Right. So that this phrase, right. It's ready, ready, position yourself, get a standard stance, get your balance, breathe, get, get, get there. That's called ready. You're actually preparing yourself. The second part is aim, right? How to properly aim it. So you hit what you want to. And then once you got your target, do you take your breath and then squeeze the trigger and fire. If you guys watch the way the normal people in the world, it's it's fire and forget the other two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Especially I, if I'm your sure purpose is getting the target. Isn't right? that a great analogy? Where <laughs> yes, if everyone yeah. knew, if everyone knew what that was, so you know, and and getting yourself to be in the proper mentality to properly um, get somebody's attention, if you were going to ask them out on a date or whatever. People don't understand the ready and the aim. So if you're going out there trying to find a significant other or someone that brings more pleasure to your life, you know, and, and a couple, it, it's just fire, 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 fire. <laughs> and it's like, are you guys getting to see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Lord, like, I grant me, I grant me the patience, but I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so they never ever imagine what their life would be and what that person really truly needs to be to make that happen. Mm -hmm. See, it's just fire. And then next thing we know, wow, we might as well move in with each other. And now what? Now what? It's like, wow, you know, this person wants me to actually think about them instead of just their selves. And then, you know, if, if, if I'm going to do something for someone, what is my return? What, what do I get in return? It's like no one ever took, took the time to find out from maybe people that are happily married for 20, 30, 40 years. You know, what do you think is the most important thing? See, that would be getting ready before you aim. And all of a sudden it says, well, what really made me and my wife get close to each other is when I realized that it's important for me to love myself 
before I could give that love to others. Well, if you never did that before you were looking for a mate, now you're doing it in the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, but that's the thing though. Is like I already aim, yes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you need that that person that go that forces you to take aim, right? Yeah. You, whether that's a mentor or a partner or somebody, like someone that actually gives you a reason outside of yourself to like change, right? Yeah. And the thing is, is like some people will go, I want these things in a relationship, right? Like here's my list of things. And that list gets bigger as you get older, right? Yeah. Um, but but what's so interesting about it is exactly what you were saying. Like when you go out and you actually ask people, one of the things that I've heard that flips after you're past your 30s, right? Say you're in the dating pool as you're older and Craig, I'm sure is can attest to this because he's been there, but yeah. it's like now, now you're no longer, you're no longer like all that big fucking list doesn't matter as much as the essentials, the important things as a human being, like that they're kind to you, that exactly. they care, that they, you're no longer like they need to have brown hair and they need to have, uh, purple eyes and you know what i yeah. mean like all that stuff or so. be hugely muscular or right exactly uh, tall yeah. you got to be six over six feet tall over, exactly you, know I mean? you got to no, make 200, yeah. 250 000 a year it's like <laughs> that's not that's, even enough anymore <laughs> that's where the learning comes from and starting from scratch in you know whatever it is that you you want to do is it, the way i look at it is you got to start someplace and you're going to make you're going to make errors. You're going to make mistakes. Right. But how do you learn? By making mistakes and learning from those who have made mistakes ahead of you and taking that information and putting it together to see what is going to work the best for you. And that's what I think is so great is that's actually, in a sense, part of the journey, part of the learning in right. finding your purpose because, okay, this didn't work over here. What about if I try this? No, this didn't work here. What if I tried this? Um, from okay, from an acting perspective, if I may introduce that, oh, you know, um, there's voiceover work, there's stunt work. What if I'm not a good actor, but I love, I, I enjoy falling, rolling, uh, doing some of the more physical things. You know, there are people that maybe they're not great actors, but boy, they are great stunt people. So they find that even though it's part of the industry, I kind of like stunt work or going into voiceover, the same thing. I may not be able to look good in front of a camera. Um, wh what is it they used to say in radio? You have uh, a face for radio because your voice <laughs> sounds so good. <laughs> and there are a lot of people that, okay, being a, a, a former disc jockey, uh, there are a lot of people in radio who probably at least it from the classical actors or at least the view from people who look at actors and say you've got the face for acting they don't look good but oh have they got a great voice and so they yeah. take that talent and they use it and that to me is also is part of discovering your purpose and then it's going to change throughout life right um you know It'd be uh, weird if it didn't you know like exactly. you brought up stunt work right Right. And there's this writer director, I believe his name's uh, I'd have to look it up. Maybe it's Doug Lippman, but I'd, I'd have to check. But there was this director that was a stunt work person in, in wow. film for a long time. And then he decided he wasn't seeing the type of stunt work and the type of films anymore that he was in when he was younger. Right. And so he's like, I'm going to have to shift to directing. And he just made John Wick. So it's. It, it's you you go back and that was and just go, nominated what, what for missing? best stunt crew according exactly. to SAG it won, Astra. and it? It, no unfortunately it didn't but i actually thought it was the best um right i can't remember who won it was not that i'd have yeah to i'm gonna that right but it was it but to me oh it was mission impossible that's what won mm. and if i look at both the, the the more recent version of Mission Impossible. If I look at both, there was more stunt work, in my opinion, done in John Wick. Again, my opinion. Does, does uh, it ever stop? Yeah, practically not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, like, it's like he, he goes stunt, from. It's one stunt to another for the entire length of the film. 
pretty much. And especially yeah, that last sequence on the stairs, it's like a, a half an hour of trying to climb this whole big staircase. <laughs> and he gets knocked all the way back down and then up it's, again. It's so but, interesting yeah. how they keep reinventing it too. The director, I got him wrong. It's Doug or David Leach is the, okay. the director, but he okay. did films like Bullet Train and his new film is Fall Guy, The Fall Guy. Oh, it's a, that's so, a, a, a yeah, remake. it's in theaters yeah, right yeah, now. And that's so, about stunt people, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so yeah, you have certain expertises, and then you get to a certain age where you go, okay, I want to take my expertise somewhere else. You know, like I, right. you, for instance, Dad, me to a certain extent with what I'm doing now, Craig, mm -hmm. of course. Like all of us have certain talents and expertises that we've accumulated that kind of make this job a little bit easier. But yeah, then at yeah. the same time, it's still so completely new, you know? So like, yeah. I think that's the fun of it is like realizing when, and this is one of those things like that video I shared with everyone about Donald Glover. You have to realize in life when you're no longer excited about what you're doing and find what excites you and go all in on that. Because right. believe it or not, like the, a lot of that shit shows up when you're in that mode and zone because you're, it's so contagious, yeah, right? To be in that, that mood. I'm the thing I'm realizing more now with people that, that, um, you know, that I'm hearing, you know, and just, I love watching a lot of podcasts. I love watching a lot, of, a lot of inspirational stuff and stuff like this. And, and one of the things that I constantly see is that the world is finally coming to a place where it's okay for a person to say, that's a great question. I don't know. So you're finally finding people that are successful, whatever your definition of that word is, right? <laughs> all right. So all we use all these words that we all have different, you know, different things about. And if someone were to ask me what my purpose is, what my purpose is, um, it's, it's, it's me just getting better than who I was before. I even think that using, well, I just want to be 1% better than the day I was before. I, I'm not saying that anymore because the process is you doing your very best to get the most out of the life you have. And, and I might be focused on relationships for a little while and then I'm, I'm, I'm focused on, you know, something else. So if someone asked me what my purpose is. My purpose is to just be better. And then through that trials and tribulations and victories and all this nice stuff that happens, because I get so much joy um, out of the, um, the journey, out of the process of, of doing that, that I just know that that inspires other people. It inspires other people. They, they see you uh, go into an imagination they can see as possible and they go into imagination. So sometimes I think a lot of words, um, <clears throat> you know, people will say, what's your passion? What's your purpose? What's your calling? And I really, I really believe that if people would do this, they would be blown away. If you ask that other person, well, great, great question. Can you give me a definition of what purpose is by telling me what it is in your life? And I can guarantee you, you would get, um, um, that's a good um, question. <laughs> million yeah, answers yeah. based it's on like, the individual. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because I, like we were talking about with other people, there were times in my life where if you asked me what my calling or my purpose was, uh, what my passion was, it would be being a race car driver. And then I don't know how I talked myself out of that, but I did. So it's going to be, be a good mechanic and work up the accolades to go up the ladder to one day being a crew chief instead of overnight where I have zero interest in cars. <laughs> and it's hard and, for some people to admit that to themselves though. Like it's very difficult right. to go through that and go, God, I like bet my whole life on this. And in my generation too, like, I feel like, um, you know, when I see like the older generations, it was totally normal to go, ah, eh, like this isn't paying me enough. I'm going to go apprentice somewhere else. I'm going to go do this or that. Um, but like as the millennial generation, the younger generations have been raised, it's always like, what's your purpose? And you have to figure that out at 18. 
because you're about to make a hundred thousand dollar decision. So what is it going to be, right? And that you're going to yeah. get that hundred thousand dollars right away, and yeah. then you're you're set for life. <laughs> <laughs> So no, then it's like, I, oh I, shit, what do I want to do? Cause I'm about to invest the next five years and a hundred grand into this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to the extreme obviously, but like no, but where we see it, Matt, really big time yeah. is, is okay. Here's the younger part of your life where you know that you know that you have life figured out. That's what I think is funny because if you can talk to someone that's 62, 72, 82, no one believes that a person later in life is still figuring it out. It's like all of a sudden we're supposed to have this figured out. So the fun thing for me, whenever I met people that were in college, you know what I mean? What do you do? Well, I go to school. What's your major? Have no clue. What? Wait a minute. You told me you're in school. Yeah, I'm taking a bunch of basic courses to figure out what my major is going to be. And then you find people that, well, you know, I went into pre-med, uh, then I did law for a little bit, and then I went into political science. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah there's science. one dude that was like, <laughs> he was like in the Navy SEAL. There's this one guy, you guys can look him up. In his life so far, he's been in the Navy SEALs. He's been, um, he's he's been a PhD doctor, and he's been a NASA scientist. All three yeah. of those things have happened. And he's done all three of those things in his lifetime. And you'd think, oh, God, just one of those would be enough for me. No, not if you were bored and driven. And that's you know the what point, I mean? Because my, my girlfriend, Susan, it's different. It, uh, she started out in college. She wanted to be a chemist. And she went through everything. She was a chemistry uh, chemistry major. She graduated. She worked for a major medical, a major chem company. And she was on the fast track to being like earning six figures. She got married, moved to Southern California. And what did she do? She became a teacher. She became a teacher of students who have special needs. And what? She loves it. Yeah. I, and it's like, I'm sure it's rewarding in a way that, you know, you there's certain types of personalities that certain things are more rewarding. You know? Exactly. And she right. found, she found a different purpose at a different time because at the time that she was, she worked for this major medical uh, or pharmaceutical company, you know, she loved it. She had a great time. And then later as, as she grew in life, she found other, like you said, Matt needs yeah. needs equals. Okay. In this case purposes, and she loves it and she's working to get credentials to go further in this part of her life, in this career. And it's fascinating to watch because she was very happy being or working with that pharmaceutical company. Yeah. And she's as happy, if not more, doing what she's doing now as a special needs teacher. No, that is very cool. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I think any, any forms of teachers, especially is like, you know, that's, that's not just a hard job. That's, that's almost an impossible job nowadays. So, I, you know, like my heart goes out to all teachers because I've heard oh gosh, yes. and read so much stuff about this new group of young adults and, and young people that are coming up and it's, it's not great news, right? Like between COVID and, um, just the amount of things that some of them are reading at like a third grade level, but they're graduating high school, third, fourth grade mm -hmm. level and graduating high school. And they're just dumping them immediately into hundred thousand dollar degree colleges and they can't complete any of the courses because they're they don't have the knowledge of even the beginnings like they're they're doing basic math by the time they get to graduation age and it's like obviously that's subjective based off what you want to do with your life maybe math isn't sure. something that that will serve you as much correct but what's so interesting is like the reason I think that is, is, is there's no real purpose for any of those things in those kids' eyes in comparison right. to growing on YouTube or doing these other things, growing on TikTok. To them, they're looking at that and trying to refine those skills and just like I've heard too, like ditching school now is so commonplace, even as a freshman in high school. And it's like, okay, I get the seniors can ditch, right? Because they're about to graduate. But <laughs> well, you usually ditch because you know you have enough credits to pass. 
Yeah. Or you don't care. Yeah. Or you don't These parents will show up and they'll go, okay, Jimmy needs to graduate, right? Jimmy needs to graduate high school. What does he need? And the teachers basically are just responding by, well, they need to show up and actually go to class and do the work. That's what they're not doing, right? They're not engaging with it in any way. But you could also say we're using a education system that's hundreds of year, years old for mm -hmm. modern human beings that doesn't work for them. They don't learn the same way. It's, it's, it's time for us to figure out some new way to teach them. Maybe, and, you know, yeah. And life skills. I, I mean, if you want to talk you about the word, you brought up the other thing it called skill though. Sorry to yeah. interrupt you. It's like, it's like if schools <clears throat> in, in, in general, what people do is they try to find out what they're interested in at this moment. Okay. And through that interest, being interested and then applying a little bit of your imagination it is actually put you in a situation where you'll start acting on the thing that you're interested in, not knowing if this is something that you want to pursue, get good at, get gooder at, or just say, this ain't for me. I was sharing with a guy the other day. Uh, I don't even know if this was on the interview that I did with Ola uh, Meyer from Sweden. But I just said, you know, I don't know why people make a big deal out of, you know, someone gave me a trumpet. And so why wouldn't I want to learn how to play it? Uh, I did until I went. I have absolutely no interest. <laughs> yeah. But yet, and, and then I did the same with the guitar, mm -hmm. right? And um, not that I didn't like it or one wouldn't want to be a good trumpet or a guitar player. I just went. I, this is not me. So sometimes not only do we not communicate, or should I say all the time, we're not connecting and communicating with each other because we have different definitions of the word. But I also have noticed that there's a lot of things that people say you need, that if you hear that from your environment, your culture, your ecosystem, everything says that you need this. Um, how fast, or how, how quickly you can look at yourself as a loser, not enough, not being worthy, not be deserving, because the thing that everyone told you that you needed to have, you don't have. So like, why aren't you passionate about something? Why aren't you passionate about something? What the hell's your calling? What do you want? What's your purpose? These are all words that people say that we all need to have. When I would say that a majority of the people on the planet don't fucking have them. Or they're indoctrinated so much by the way they've been raised that they don't know how to think outside the box. And I think that is just as yeah. important, Robert and Matt, because is it fulfilling to me or to the person to do what they want to do? Or is it because other people, and you've brought this up several times, is what other people think you should be doing. Are yeah. you living in your imagination or are you living in other people's imagination? Yeah. That's a, those is. are words that you have shared in, most recently in other groups. And you think about that and it's like, okay, so am I, am I living in his or her imagination or do I see myself going from that to where I want to be? Right. Or am I just stuck there the, because I'm not thinking outside the box? From the day you think from the day that a little child is being taught, mm -hmm. right? It's this constant thing of, 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 again, learning is different as a child because you're learning to walk. What do you do to learn to walk? You actually practice and walking. You learn to eat. You learn to talk. You learn to everything you learn to do is something that you're immediately practicing on doing. <laughs> it's like you, you stand the kid up, you grab the little fingers, you put it in the walker, you get it in the swing. It's amazing if we looked at what how children were treated, young toddlers. It's like learning is doing right now, doing it. 
Uh, you want to learn how to play this video game? Yeah. Here's the controller. Let me show you what the hell to do. Da, 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 da. Here, try this. Ah, well, I got it. Oh, I made a couple of wrong moves. I got it. Next level, next level. You can see where people really get interested in doing things where they're lifetime doing. Mistake, learn, mistake, learn, good, 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 not so good, killed, go, you know, it's all these things. And then you take that person that is learned and then you put them in kindergarten and it's now memorization time. Not learning time. Memorization time. <laughs> is that, What is this? Here's a card. Uh, I think. Is that an A? Oh, good job, Tommy. That, that's awesome. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, now we're no longer doing. We're supposed to be learning something that we can apply. All right? So writing my alphabet, that's a learning. Reading and saying what I read, that's learning. Doing a... Two plus two equals four. I'm doing that. That's learning. But then there's a lot of stuff that's like not learning. It's just memorize and dump it on a quiz and time to move on. You know, writing letters, writing the alphabet, doing two plus two. That is, but the rest of it, memorize this stuff for a test. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's and like. I don't need to know it anymore. There, it doesn't yeah. apply to my life for the rest of my life. Well, it's like well, people it's, need to be right. need to look at uh, doing vocational education or yeah. apprenticeship things that will benefit them in life. I've always said, and I've had this issue ever since I graduated from high school, uh, and in a sense, I was guilty of it because I didn't do part of what I'm going to say. Um, life skills. And I know that we've kind of brought that up in previous broadcasts where we've talked about, okay, why can't they teach banking in high school? <laughs> why can't they teach home economics in high school? What about, and, and when I say home economics, I also mean doing laundry, cooking, woodworking, yeah, man, taking say, care I've, of your I've car. You know, clean dishes these are more things, than I've had to use algebra. So. Yeah, these are things, <laughs> exactly. These are things that you need to survive. And it's not taught in school or it's not taught well in school. You know, boys are not necessarily in home economics and girls, at least in my time, boys right. were not in home economics. Girls were not in shop. They need to learn how to do that, especially nowadays as there are so many people that are single. And even then, after you graduate from college, not you know, especially nowadays, not too many people are getting married. So you, whether you're a man or a woman, however you identify yourself, uh, you have to be able to know a lot of these things. And normally, okay, fine. I learned it by trial and error. And thank you, mom, for helping me out. But when you're not uh, good at fixing things like little pipe leaks, or, uh, you know, uh, stuff that's, you know, okay, let's plug a hole here. Oh, maybe if I could use a toothpick in this hole and then re-screw the screw back in, Hey, now the screw fits a lot better and every, you know, you don't learn these things, what you should. That's, that would be one of those things. Like why, again, I find YouTube so fascinating mm -hmm. is that, you know, you can find an individual that says, I'm just going to teach you all the stuff that, you know, your dad should have taught you. You know what I mean? Well, and yeah. Then, and then you got cooking classes. And yeah, I guarantee. I'm lucky. I was jump starting my car the other day and I'm like, dad. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I have a, we have a, we have a gas vehicle and then we have a Tesla and the Tesla apparently cannot jump the gas vehicle. It's just not allowed or do something with the battery. So we had to buy this whole like machine to do it instead of calling somebody right and it ended up working out but i'm still like i probably only had to jump a car like once in my life so i was like <laughs> i don't know was, how to use this what that was yesterday <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> <laughs> haven't had to really but, jump start the tesla so <laughs> yeah and, and so to think that uh 
you know, there's all these things that now you can go on, you know, YouTube and and actually write, you know, write in there what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. And, and you know, it's, it's good to use some of your common sense to do that, but some people don't have common sense. It, it's just one of those things where, um, you know, I think that's a lot of people sometimes believe that they could learn something that comes natural to somebody else. Um, and that's why we have the best of the best of the best. Mm -hmm. There's still these group of people on the planet that they know that they know that they know they can sing. That message just didn't get to the rest of the human beings. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, it's and that's why seasons of you know, some people Idol think they're the funny. Best. Some people uh -huh. think they're a leader. Uh, some people think that, uh, um, you know, they're, I, I, it blows my mind away to still see that, you know, there's people out there that just really truly believe that, that, um, they're, they're one of the most, um, attractive people on the planet. Mm -hmm. And, and you like, you know, they're like, Hey, you know, you, you can tell that I, I am, I'm the deal along with a, a bag of chips and I'm going like, wow. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. It's very suggest suggestive. But I laugh so. with mom. Subjective. Uh, subjective but, I, but I laugh with uh, my wife, Terry, and, and uh, uh, is um, she just gets tweaked about someone apparently hasn't taught that woman how to do her eyebrows. Yeah, Hannah does the mm -hmm. eyebrow thing too with Hannah. She's like, and I thought, don't you realize that they're looking in the mirror and going spot on spot on <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah of course but i i i think it's even the champions those are those of the world <laughs> that's what they, they go to plastic surgeons and get their face done and they're looking in the mirror and going i should have gave you a tip you know what i mean that's right on the money and then other people look at them and goes why did they do that? Mm -hmm. Why did they do that? Well, apparently the doctor, the surgeon was very clear about what they wanted to see because they're the ones that got to look in the mirror. And then the rest of the world goes, their face is messed up. <laughs> I mean, being the more and more that I get tattooed, right? Like that's, that's, more so the case because as you get older you get more money you get wiser so then you get better tattoos find better <laughs> artists and then all you get to do is talk about your worst tattoos with your great artists now right and how they can be fixed <laughs> mm -hmm. but <laughs> but but that but that they're, is but they're the, cool but they were cool when you got them well yeah of course but like <laughs> Still, I, I still think, you know, like I for a long time, I bounced around about what to get tattoo wise, right? Because you're like, I don't know if I get this. I don't know. I get it's permanent on my body. Now I just reflect back and go, that was a different part of my life. And it's almost like a visual of that reflection mm -hmm. like of what I was into at that time or what I liked. And at the same Craig, time, Craig and, I, Craig and I just use photographs in, instead of getting our body tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't. The, there's no pain in the photographs for me, so I like. I need that Wait, adrenaline. Some of my you need that realization, right, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, picture, I just had, okay, I fine. Just no realization. Ah. The other day, so it was like you yeah. sit down and it's like, oh, there's the needle again. That's how it feels, right? <laughs> like a cat scratching a sunburn. So oh oh. oh. <laughs> But but you know it if if you see people with tattoos there's I I thought that that was a good point to go into because you'll yeah. see people with tattoos and you'll go why the fuck would they have done that why would they do that with yeah. their body or oh, they yeah. do that with their face or whatever you may say yeah I can tell you as someone that's gotten tattoos that when I leave the tattoo shop and even the weeks after months after the level of confidence that I feel in my body is like so much higher because I've taken the decision to do something with it that was my choice and i think it's the mm -hmm. same whether it's a haircut or anything like that right maybe those are more temporary of course but i don't know i'm not a, i'm not as attached to the permanence of my body because it's not permanent so like isn't I, that though you finding you and expressing you? yeah right yeah say. and the same so with tattoos me, yeah what gives yeah. me confidence i know this sounds bizarre but what gives me confidence is is uh direct deposits 
<laughs> yeah, uh, for me, okay. for me, the numbers don't do anything. It, it's what they are capable of, or the things that you can get yeah. with them that more matters. Like, I, I, uh, unfortunately, the only part of my mind that identifies the numbers is the scarcity part, and that's why I, I've learned to be better at at dealing with it. Because like when I see money, it's always like, a, oh, it should be more, so I feel more comfortable. So right. like maybe is it anyway that for you or is it more like accomplishment? Like, holy shit, this just got deposited in my account. I did good. <clears throat> yeah, for me, for me, again, I, 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 I you know, I, I put in chat GPT really quickly, you know, what is a uh, purpose, right? And I just thought it says ultimately the inter interpretation of purpose. Isn't that crazy? Mm. And I've noticed in all the words that, you know, what is love? You know, what is, uh, you know, again, based on culture, who you are, your upbringing, what word would be more to you than, you know, what's what's the definition of connection? What's the definition of love? And AI consistently comes up with this exactly same thing for me in the words that I look for. As it says, it can vary among individuals, cultures, influenced by personal beliefs, values, experience, and social norms. And it's like, there it is. Oh, you know? boy. Yeah. There it is. So of course. it's like, wait a minute. What do you mean my purpose is different because I grew up in a different culture in a different place of the world? And all of us go, duh. Like, like why are but you We don't so take that into account when we think about it for ourselves. We don't. That, that our environment... <laughs> is that way like if you favor marriage in such a way maybe you grew up under a bunch of really good marriages and therefore yeah. you value marriage larger than someone that's you know their parents have gotten a divorce or they've been through stuff differently not to say you value it differently right. and how important it is in your life but more how much you want it like your desire for it right because if someone's yeah, never either. seen a good relationship around them odds are they're going to be like yeah relationships suck why would i want to be in one of those Right. But if you've seen nothing but like love and affection, you're going, I want that. Like, I want that in my life. So, oh, yeah. Well, that's the, the individual journey that we all take. <clears throat> we hear, we hear people that will not only uh, dedicate themselves to a, a belief or an organized religion, but they'll also, uh, you know, party lines or whatever. It's like I have, uh, you know, my purpose is to serve my country. You know, I'm in the military. Uh, I retired from the military. You know what I mean? How many years? You know, 40 years. And it's like, what? why? I Really? And it's like, yeah, it's what my dad did. It's what grandpa did. Sure. It's like my brothers, my uncles and aunts, you know. So if you found people like my, <clears throat> one of my uh, uncles on my uh, mom's side, he he was a plumber. He was a master plumber, and his son's a master plumber, and his youngest son is a, ma a master plumber. You know what I mean? So you got three people that are all plumbers because that's what they did. It's like, are you staying with mom? Are you coming with me? And I can show you a trade. You know. So now all of a sudden you trade that trade for a significant amount of money compared to an average human being. It's pretty easy to get sort of wrapped up and, you know, yeah. that's why I'm I'm a plumber because grandpa and I'm a plumber because dad and I'm a plumber because my brother. <laughs> you know, You're not, yeah. Going back to what Craig said earlier with the, the things that they don't teach you, right? Like there, no one teaches you how to figure out what you want or to think for yourself in those ways. That's no, something that you gosh. figure out with age and wisdom that it's like. Yeah man, I've been fucked over enough times and I just don't feel good enough about my life. Maybe I should start making the decisions for my own life at this point instead Amen. of listening to everyone else's, right? Because like it, it gets to that point where you're just like so frustrated with what your your situation is, right? And, and that's probably normally... why people are making a big deal out of it, Matt. It's like, well, you don't have passion. You don't have purpose. You don't have a calling. You're not excited about life. Um no one told me those things were important <laughs> yeah it's the pursuit yeah. of happiness Wait, I, I, I'm, of happiness. I'm now an adult and now you're telling me that i could actually dedicate a couple of hundred thousand dollars in debt to a degree and now i'm a doctor and i hate this shit. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> how am i gonna pay back my student loans 
I know Biden will do it for me. So it's like, no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm <laughs> okay. You know, the science of getting rich, Robert, I think that's kind of, you know, one of the, one of the books that you bring up is okay. Fi you know, find whatever it is that you like. And it gives you a, f that is a yeah. book that is not, I mean, I don't recall it ever being recommended in high school. Why? I don't know. That is a course unto itself that should it's be taught still, to everybody still, because it gives such a great the, foundation. It's still the secret behind the secret. Absolutely. I am blown away that I consistently see some of the, you know, whoever is the newest person on the totem pole that's, you know, knocking, knocking it out of the park. You know, the same with singing and athletics and everything is all of a sudden someone gets their tipping point like Taylor Swift. And it's like, what the oh, hell? You know what I mean? And, and you know, um, <clears throat> and then all of a sudden you're like now at that mental thought where, oh, my God, this happened to him. But I, I, I no one wants to admit how much they've been doing it, how much that they love the process of doing it. And it could be two things. One, they love the process. Or the second is people love them for doing the process. Mm -hmm. Because you they know, can't do it, so they're yeah. living them vicariously. Yeah, so now mom and dad's happy. Everyone's happy. Everyone thinks that this but is But I think thing. it's okay, though. What do you guys think about the thought that that's perfectly fine, though? That there's certain personality types that that's their default and that that's the way that yes. they feel happy? Like the caretaker yeah. aspect, right? Like mo they're more interested right. in other people's happiness than they are in their own, yeah. and therefore that makes them happy. Thank um, God for those people. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not one of those I mean, people. Those are nurses. Those are teachers. Yeah. Those are yeah, voluntary no. working people. My, my wife, my the mom, social, they're both social yeah, worker people, caretaker yeah. people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like they're they're always thinking about us, and it's like I'm always thinking about the mountain that we have to conquer. I'm. It's not that yeah. I'm not thinking. So now about you have them. a person. Now you have a person. You know, because like you just said, Craig said, why aren't we taught these certain things in school? You know, me, the number one thing I always thought should, should been taught in school, and it needs to be an hour a day every day that you're in school. It should be a subject. And that would be learning to properly communicate and connect with another human being. Public speaking. I mean, that's, they leave that to therapy. <laughs> yeah, that because too. It's but like, that's the, if there's anything that I've done the most in therapy, it's communication, how I communicate with myself and others. Mm -hmm. It's like the number yeah. one issue that I probably have had in my life based off my personality and just the way I am, that it's like, I, I can be pretty bullheaded and trying to get what I want done. Yeah. But you realize that someone... it's learning other people and communicating with them in the right way to support yeah. them. You get what you want a lot easier. <laughs> You know, well, that when when you read, you know, how to influence and when when how to win people, friends and influence, and influence people, people. Yeah, right. yeah. And then the first time, it's like it was just the most bizarre thing. It's still like mo one of the most entertaining and exciting thing that I've ever been to. It's always something that I I will uh, I will duplicate sometime in my future. But it's like to, to put. Um, you know, 50 to 100 people in a room and basically ask them questions and watch them separate themselves based on their beliefs and their personalities on other people in the room. And so my mentor split them into four. And then when I became a little more aware and I know that there's a lot more education out there now um, that, you know, there's 16 personalities.com and that's one six dot com personalities.com. So when all of a sudden you sit in a room for three days and you first get your first aha per, aha moment that you should have known, but you didn't know that people hear different, they speak different. And again, that's where these uh, uh, conversations come from. I can't believe you said that to me. And the response from the other person is said what to you? And they say, you said this, this, and this to me, and that hurt my feelings. That is not what I said. To think that that's such a miscommunication in the world that there's now a commercial, I, I some progressive or whatever. But it's just showing uh, the funniness of human beings where you see a bunch of people in a room 
and one of the guys walks up to another guy and said, you said so-and-so. And he goes, I did not. And they go, this referee comes out, throws a red flag, which means I'm going to look at the review. And they bring a guy out with a monitor so they both can watch the review, the replay, like on football, to see exactly what was said. And it was like, wow, the world knows through a commercial that this is a biggest disconnect. That no, I know. Are like, yeah, Matt, I can't believe you said that you disrespected me. You know, I thought you being my son and the stuff, all the all the stuff <laughs> I've done for you. You know, there's no way that you could possibly manage your life without me. You know, and it's like. <laughs> And, and but yet in the midst of this, you know, you dish me, you disrespected me. And it's like people are like, why would I do that on purpose? I love you. Mm -hmm. No, you disrespected me. And this is what you did. And I just seen one of these. That's why people love watching all these judge movies. Because you watch these judge movies like Judge Judy and all these different judge movies. And it's like the perception of what one person thought than the other. And we hear them when we go, people really think that way. Like the sister borrowed her other sister like $4,000, right? <clears throat> and so she finally brings her to court. And they ask the sister, did your sister give you money? Yes. Okay. So now your sister is in a bad position and she needs the money back. Why won't you pay her? Because she has more money than me. Oh, and she wants it all in one lump sum. Did she give it to you in one lump sum? Yeah, because I needed it. And you sort of just sat there and you're like scratching your head. <laughs> From one person's perspective, with a lack of communication, which again, you know, people are telling you that that you should get a purpose, that you should have passion, and you got a calling. If you ever just got back in their face and said, "Well, what what is your purpose? What is mm -hmm. your passion? What are your calling?" They probably couldn't even tell you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, most people aren't even asked that, right? You know, right? Like it's or normally like, "What do you it. do? What do you do for a living? What do you do?" Right? Why are you? Why are you here? As little as possible, <laughs> man. I, I try to do. That's why it's so fun. Possible. That's that's why it's so funny to answer it that way because people are like taken aback by it. They're like, "You you've messed with funny. my state. You didn't say contractor or whatever that I normally." <laughs> know. That's what you always hear. Like you ask people, "What are they doing?" And they go, "Nothing." And then it's like, "Well, when do you know you're finished?" Never. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's what's so interesting about it is um, sometimes I, I like mentally gaslight myself with similar shit, right? Because I'm not as spiritual. So what I'll end up doing is I'll just be like, ah, oh, you know, none of this really matters anyway. Right. Why do you have to be spiritual? Well, I think spirituality is more like a, well, let me, wow. let me, let me, let me preface it this let me preface it this way. I is think that a, is that a demand from you or somebody outside of exactly. you? No, I, I just use spiritual as a word because most people understand it. Like Okay. Okay. It, I, I'm, like I'm if looking I were at the to definition say, of that word because a lot of people think, you know, spiritual, oh, it means God. Well, exactly. to other people, it means heart. To other people, it means source. To other people, it means uh their their own Again. mind. Again, total di different difference. I know I some. Say, yeah. I know some sorry, very, but... very. Uh, let's just call them. Um, what do they call it when you're you're a fanatic? Okay, so fanatic? like it's <laughs> okay if you're it's okay if you're if you're a red or blue fanatic. But how about an organized religion fanatic? Because if you say spiritual to those people, that means the absence of God. Well, it could also no, mean yeah, so it's they are mean that. Craig, you won't say his name. Say his name. And it's like, yeah. what? what? No, I've dealt with those types of people where they're like, <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's why I think I play loosely with that term is that like in my mind, even when I talk to people, right? 
and then they go and I say, oh, I've been more spiritual, like I've been more connected to these things. Then they feel the need to like reach out to me and be like, oh, yeah, spiritually, I've been connecting to these things, too. And I'm like, no, that's not exactly the same thing because I'm not using it in the same way. Like, so I have to rethink of a yeah. new definition for it, because when I use in the many word cases, spiritual, it, uh, it Spiritual Imagine could mean God. <laughs> it, it could mean Jesus. Well, I think it a lot of people Buddha. see it that way. It could mean Hindu yeah. gods. Uh, and that's that that's higher the power. I bring like people high, tend to be like you. the yes. universe, a higher power. That's right. what spirituality is, whether I'm connecting to myself, whether I'm connecting to something larger than myself. Um, but with with me in specific, it's like I I I I just tend to lack that that care for that connection. Like in, in a lot of ways, um, I'm not looking for like a higher version of anything. I'm just looking at more higher thinking in a sense. So like, I'm not even, I think it's a difficult thing to talk about because like, I'm not really putting mm -hmm. myself there. Cause people have problems with that too. If you go, Oh, yeah. I'm God, a higher version of myself is God, right? My mm -hmm. consciousness. Then there, then there's a whole lot of people are going to go, yeah, I don't think that that's right. You know, but that's not for them to decide. So I think like, what tends to happen in this situation is when you go, oh, I'm spiritual or, oh, I'm religious or whatever. There's a lot of context that's missing and what your yeah. definition of that is like that you were saying that. Well, according to them, yeah. there's a reason why I say that according to them, because you may feel that you are spiritual in your way, but yeah, that's right. not your own again, personal definition of it. And it's not enough you. for some people. Right? Exactly. It's because somebody else may think, that. okay, Buddha is that spiritual for them right and or muhammad or whatever uh god jesus uh the the horse down the street i mean it just uh <laughs> you know but that's that's the whole thing is right is that if you feel that that is what your spirit connects with fantastic yeah they, we, when we were just talking about you guys just talking ab exactly about that, it's if you were going to, the way I think, my perception, my opinion is everything in life, <clears throat> you got to an um, um, imagine and start doing that imaginating thing toward what you think that imagination will be. And in that journey and that joy of that journey, you know, people are always talking about happiness. To me, I now know that happiness are moments. Happiness are moments. Joy for me is the process. Process of, of imagining and, and I get joy out of creating and, and going after my imagination. So if you were just using this in a sense of travel, you know, my son, Kyle, uh, Matt's brother decides he's going to go to Japan. Once you make that decision, it's like, where's the air flights? How am I going to get there? Where's the hotel room? When I get there, how am I going to eat? Where's the restaurants? Where's the stuff that I got to find a way to get on the right Wi-Fi so I can communicate with the world? You know, it's all these things. And like he was saying to me that uh, in her chat, that he was having difficulty navigating the bus systems there and the subway systems and public transportation. And it just hit me like a rock. It's like, there's an app for that. You know, why are you using the United States Google map to try to find your way around Japan? You know, I would get, you know, J J Japanese people are pretty smart and a lot of countries are. If they got a big part of their revenue comes from tourism, I can guarantee you there's an app that you can download on your phone that's in English that can help you get to where you need to build the economy of Japan. And, and it's like, you know, so it's like, but that's the way my mind thinks, right? And so, you know, as other people are, are on this journey and they're trying, you know, we're talking about the topic of purpose or passion or any of these words, spiritual, love, uh, anything. I, I, I really truly believe that until you eliminate words that mean nothing to you and then make a defined thought of what your meaning is for a word and it can change you know so if you look up something just as simple as love the word love do you see how difficult it is for people to explain it 
because wait a minute do you have love for your mother and father yeah well is that the same love then that you have for susan no no that but then do you have any pets yeah do you love the pets yeah do you love your pets like you love your mom no and then if you have multiple pets or multiple kids why do they always do this to you it's like okay you have three sons yeah where who's your favorite who's your favorite <laughs> And then what do people say is, oh, my God, I couldn't really honestly answer that question. So I'm just going to say, well, they're different people. I love them different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And all of what I just said for, I would believe, 99.9999% of the people were people that were pulling these ideas out of their ass without even thinking about it. It is like we're so worried about being judged or looked at, you know, less than or, or someone that's not educated or whatever, that if someone said something to you and he's like, listen, I love America. Uh, what's the love about America? I hate America. What's your definition of hate? Because if your definition of hate is mine, then you're not living here. See, I hated living in foster care. And I corrected it the second I turned 18 years old. You see what I mean? It's like, <clears throat> you can't tell people that you hate something. No, wait a minute, you can. Because you have your own definition of that word. So we're all trying to judge each other. And it's like, you need a purpose. You need a calling. You need a why to make you cry. And it's like, we throw out this bullshit with our definition of the word. And if someone challenged us on that very damn same word, we wouldn't even know how to respond to it. Because you hear this stuff all the time. It's going, man, you sure wouldn't treat people this way if you really love people. Well, that's their definition of love. Mm -hmm. That's their definition of love. Because to certain organized religions, Love is sparing the rod. You know, sparing the rod, showing discipline, teaching them through discipline. Oh, what was the word? Hey, you know what? This is going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me. I'm now, vice no, versa. it's vice versa. It's like, I'm really not enjoying spanking your ass. You know what I mean? I'm going like, what? 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 You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. th if this is hurting you more than this right now, swelling up the back of my legs and the back of my back, you'd stop doing that. You know what I mean? It's like, where the hell does this stuff come from? And so, you know, I really, really would tell everybody if, 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 um, if someone said, what's your purpose? You know what I mean? My first response would be, I need to know your definition of purpose. And I'd probably be more interested in why you believe you need one. How yeah. freaking deep is that? Well, Ooh. I got to have a purpose because so-and-so said I needed a purpose. Because if you guys really understand organized religion, and I'm not even, I couldn't even be measured as far as my, my lack of knowledge about being theology, you know, different religions. But I do know what all of them say the purpose is. The purpose is to constantly looking at whatever the highest power of that religion is and dedicating your life to that. And the next part of that is after dedicating your laws or rules or whatever that you need to do the sacrifices that you need to prove that, that you're connected with this word, right? Then the next part of most religions is to make sure they convert people out of their belief to their belief. There's the two ones. So it's like, um, you know, and it's like, that's the purpose. So if you're in organized religions and, you know, I'll make this challenge out to people, you can reach out to me publicly, I mean, privately. And, and it's like, so when people tell me that they're on this, I'm this, whether it's Christian, Judas, uh, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, 
whatever religion it is, Scientology, you know, Mormon, whatever, Jehovah Witness, Rappel, I can't name all 460,000 registered. <laughs> really, this is true, 460,000 plus registered religions in, in America No, alone. Well, how do you know that number, Robert? How do you know? Well, because you need to get your 501c3 certification not to pay taxes. That's how I know. These are listed corporations that say I'm a religious so I don't get taxed. That's why we know how many they are. And so with all of that, then it's like I want you to think and feel like I do. But if I really want to jam somebody, I go, well, listen, what is the main purpose of your belief? What is the main purpose of, do you know that I've said that to so many Christians and they go, um, well, I, I, I said the prayer and I'm saved. So you don't even know what the purpose is of your own organized religious belief. You want me to tell you? Yeah. You put him first and all things will be added to you. And two, you got to go to every end of the world and tell everyone about the great news. So if that's the purpose, I want you to tell me how many people you've had conversations with and brought them to your local synagogue, your church, your temple. It's like, how many people are you recruiting? And it's like, I'm, I'm not doing that. Well, then you're not even fulfilling the purpose of what's written in most scriptures and most biblical books. Because why else would they put the organized religion together if your goal wasn't to obey, be in line, and bring others? <laughs> yeah, well, I when you when you come down to it too, it's like there's just such a huge aspect of humanity that's wrapped up in finding your purpose. And I think like religion, it, it it gives a lot of people a sense of long lifetime purpose. And I think that's yeah. why it still exists, right? It's like when you're born and you're growing up, um, if you really didn't have an end goal at, in mind, right, as you get older, it, it really starts to fuck with you. And I can say that from personal perspective. And that does not mean... To, you don't know how to find your own purpose, Matthew, so I'm going to oh, give this you is, one. This is the thing, though, yeah, right? I'm going to give you one. You ready? When I, <laughs> yeah, when I went to, when I started going to therapy, the first thing that my therapist and the, the ones even before I found the right one for me would ask me is exactly that question. What is your purpose? Like, what do you feel like your purpose here is? Because to them, that's one of the most important things that you can do for your mental health. If you don't feel like there's a reason to be here, there's a large reason why suicide rates are going up. People, a lot of young people just don't see a purpose for them in the future here. So they're just like, okay, I'm checking out, right? No, no and, imagination. Well, well, yeah, the, in, in so many ways, it's, it's driven in us that we need to find it. And then once it's driven in us that we need to find it, we're always also taught to always guess whether we're in the right place for that. So are you really in your purpose? Crazy, yeah. Oh, yeah. we're never. Yeah, we're not taught that purpose is self-given and it changes through life. Well, now that you got your purpose, Matt, are you happy? Maybe at that point I am. But that can change. <laughs> that's very. I, I, I'm. I'm not laughing. Right. I'm just starting. Well, actually, that's a great answer if you really think yeah. about it, because it changes through life. You know, your purpose today may not be the same purpose. I don't have tomorrow. children yet. And that's going to cause. I, I bound. Okay, yeah. I bound to think that when I have children, that my purpose in life is going to change than before I have children. Robert. So you're you're okay. You're a father. How much yeah. did that change you? That purpose that Matt is just now talking about when you had children. Look at how your lifestyle. When you just even talk about Junior, yeah. and then of course getting together with Terry. There's another change in your purpose. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it is <clears throat> what when when people say the ultimate, whatever that is, again, you got to come up with your own description. If you notice, the older I get, the more more I don't use words that that will automatically allow someone to either judge me or come up with some kind of thought that's not the one I'm trying to get across. 
and 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 so because everyone's got their own definition of the word and and uh so like like when i first heard that 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 terry was pregnant we tried we we tried it, it, it's it was really really crazy uh terry almost died from an atopic pregnancy and and man intensive care she was in there for a long time well now all of a sudden it's like the thought of having children is is slimmer than it was before when we were trying you know what i mean so all of a sudden when she became pregnant with matthew it was like um there wasn't really anything in my life that was more important to me and the reason why is because it was so important to terry See, so, you know, I tell people all the time, I sort of think it's crazy that someone can be so clear like my wife is, and she turns around and says, write down your vision, write down your imagination. I want to be a great mother. I want to be a great wife. Right. And I want to, I want, I want a great living. I want my family to be loved. I want my family to be uh, um, safe. I, I want them to be able to do whatever they want. And it's pretty interesting when someone can come up with two or three things that they want to focus on. And that can basically be what they really gives them love and, and, and passion and purpose and calling and everything for their entire life. It's only sometimes where I see uh, Terry sort of sometimes struggle with not just going back with those three are enough. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, uh, you know, that's her love language. That's everything about her, you know? So, but I know for a fact, because she's my wife for, you know, 40 years, that if I went to her right now and said, what do you think your purpose is? She would go, I don't know. Well, it's interesting now because I was even going to say, this is, this is one of the first times ever that you guys are actually fully empty nesters. Yeah. that <laughs> no, all of your guys' kids don't oh, they're not there yeah. it's weird and it's and weird. as kyle gets back i know he has plans to move out which means that's going to be a permanent thing so therefore yeah. you know like there's there's that aspect of life that i know mom's going to move you and mom will both move into i think it'll be different for her obviously than it will be for you yeah. but mom's going to have to move into this place where she'll go okay like my kids are a call away but they don't need me all right. the time after how and many I know, years? Yeah, I know as a father, it's it's different than it is for a mother because like I'm calling you for advice still and I'm sure Kyle Course is doing that and Junior yeah. and stuff. But uh, mom's role as like a caretaker and stuff. I, I mean, obviously, I think you and the dogs are just going to get all of what we were getting. <laughs> You're like, finally, it's my time. I only had to wait 30 years. So... Uh. <laughs> But but when Craig brought that up, it it is um, because again that's as individual as our DNA. Exactly. Uh, you know, we all know that that some people that became fathers that it didn't change their lives at all. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. and so and then you know the owner's manual. You 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 just do the best you can. You know because of. You know, you either duplicate what 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 your father, or your father's father did, and and then there's other people that want to break that chain, cha break that chain, um, because I just wasn't under the perspective that my children needed to go through the struggles that I went through. I know this is personal for me, um, but my goal was to take my children and put them at a place where they could take it to the next step for their children. And so my goal and Terry's goal was never, um, let's see how fast we can get Matt out of the house and on his own. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's like, you know. No, that's always had to be our decision. And I think yeah. like, yeah, yeah. And I think that that is, you know, not everyone gets that situation. I'm very grateful to have great parents that put me in that situation. I think is like- that, is Go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was going to ask Craig because, you know, whenever we sort of try to make Kyle, you know, comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
it it's we get to find all these individuals that are super successful that live forever with their parents and i thought it was very unique where it's uh oh jewish kid jewish kid jewish kid <laughs> you know what i mean yeah and it's like it's like it's like the rest it seems like the jewish tradition whatever you want to call it um it's like it's like the, the, the child goes out on its own when it's ready. Mm -hmm. Again, that's all about the ready aim fire. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it's like no one seems to be uh, beating up on certain families because the child's not out of the house doing something like being a real citizen, getting a job and working themselves up the ladder. You see what I mean? Yeah, culturally, <laughs> it's that way for sure with a lot of... Um... A lot of people, you know, like they're even what you said is like their opinion of it, right? Where it's like, if I'm not pushing the ball further up that hill for my children, then that was my failure in life. Yeah. And I think that that's an interesting thing because now we live in more of a world where it's like, oh, if it's not about me, then why am I here? Right. So it's like mixing those two things. Yeah. I don't know if it's so much religious or cultural. I, it can be. Okay. Uh, he, the way I'm, I'm trying to, you know, take in what you shared, Robert is, um, yeah, the parents want you to succeed. They want you to get out of the house. Um, but the thing is, and it's inherent in, I think being parents, there's, you're still part of their life and they're still part of your life. They yeah, will that's... always look at, out for you. And in just the same way that you and Matt shared with each other about, you know, and Matt, how you said, okay, now it's my time to get out of the house. Now it's junior's time to get out of the house. Now it's Kyle's time to get out of the house. That doesn't stop Robert and Terry from being the parents that they are, but now they're on a completely different level. Yeah. Because no, yeah, it changes a lot. It, I was telling Kyle yeah. that my brother, it's like the moment you move out, two things happen. One, you realize how much shit your parents actually did for you because now you have to do these things. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yes. So that's like one of the first ones you're like, oh, those dishes, I need to do these dishes or else it's going to get bad in here. And then and then the second thing is, is that just like you said earlier, that you realize your parents didn't have an owner's manual and they did the best that they could with what they had at the time mm -hmm. that they had similarly. And when I look back at my dad's childhood, and see how you were dad as a father to me i am incredibly fucking grateful because wow. what you had went through and then oh. to be the father you are you weren't even like 10 percent that so yeah. so That's... that takes the transformation in a person not to and that goes down to generational trauma right where it passes down right. and then it's like okay now i have that and then my children have that and it's like a never-ending cycle right and that can be right. culturally too yeah you know yeah, of so what you're and here, what Robert, you're expected you, to be. Yeah. And here, well, there, there's the word, uh, Matt, what you were expected to be. Because yeah. if you think about Robert's history, if you look at Robert's history as being abandoned and how much, uh, how much he had to go through to get to where he is today, even to just get beyond the fact of being uh, shuttled from foster home to foster home in high school, doing what you did with the truck, being incarcerated, getting through the incarceration and saying, I've had enough and I'm going to use this. I've had enough of this shit. I need to find my way so that I can have a better life. And what yeah. did you do? You did it. It may not have been the path that other people took. That's fine. I, that is your I was, I was journey. That, that is your you purpose. Yeah, right. that is your purpose. That is what you had to do to get to where you are today. And that's what everybody has to do to get where they want to be. Some right, people right. will never make it. They don't. No, they I was going to say real up. quick, Dad, it's like you're, you're just to make a joke. The ball <laughs> wasn't even up the, the cliff for you. You had to go fucking find it and bring exactly. it. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, um, yeah, I didn't have any. I, I in a couple of the foster homes I had, I had I had some great fathers. You know, mm -hmm. I I always bring up Ted Johnstone, and and even though he wasn't like you know this um, 
you know, we, rodeos, you know, we, we, they did rodeos. They, they couldn't bend more of a manly man. And the like only cowboy. thing that he, yeah, yeah. He, the, the one thing that he did for me that seems so simplistic is he just was able to tell me that if I did A, I would get B. To think that, mm -hmm. you know, I had no idea. It, it's obvious, right? You study, you get good grades. You know what I mean? So he was saying like, listen, you can't be an athlete. You can't do track. You can't do basketball. You can't do football if your grades are not a C. But there was no one that ever took the time to sit down with me and goes, this is what I expect from you. And if you do this, you get this. So there was no ever, there was never ever so, a surprise from him that if I did what I was supposed to do, that I would be rewarded for that. That was freaking huge for me because all that person did is sit down and told me parameters that if you did this, you get this. And also, if you don't do this, you get this. <laughs> so I just always knew exactly. So to think that, you know, I did just as little as possible as I could in school. Uh, and, and someone told me, listen, I just want you to know for every C, if you get a C minus, and then you get a D plus, every one of those levels is an extra hour of study in that subject. And so I looked at my report card and I'm going, you know, this is like 10 hours of study. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't do nothing until I got that study. It's a lot but of my learning. Mind, <laughs> my mind immediately went, if all these go to C's, there's no study. And it was like, then I also get to play sports and I don't have to study. So then I can play with friends and whatever. But it's like, uh, I think people are just really, really, really scared to just say, here, there's the parameters. And that's when you normally learn that by when you get your first job. It's like, mm -hmm. it blows me away because Terry loves watching these reality shows and the blow deck. And I know for a fact that what one thing that I might be totally wrong when I say this, but because I understand personality traits and stuff, and, and, and the ability of creating drama and a, and a reality show, there should be awards for people that, that figure out uh, what personalities to put in these reality shows. Like the people, the casting people. Should the casting them. people. The producers. These, oh there, should gosh, be, yes. there should be giant awards for these people that cast these shows. Actually, they're finally coming out. With some yeah, casting is in the Oscars. So. Yeah, I mean, it, which is about I, time I, when I, you think I, about it exactly yeah. the way that Robert is sharing. You it's know, like so eighty percent of the job. <laughs> yeah, they'll take a, they'll take a person that's Mormon that that you know they they go out and do two years of missionary work before they're ever allowed to get a job. So you graduate from college, have to go on a two year mission to a country and learn a different language and be a service to people before you come home and get a job. So you yeah. take that person with that culture and upbringing, and then the other girl that they have in there is she's a witchin. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> oh, a witchin. Yeah, a witchin. Yeah, yeah. Wiccan. yeah, and I'm going like these people are really good. I actually I, mean? I heard the other day that um, the FBI recruits like specifically more like goes after specifically Mormons because of the way that their their upbringing is the way that yeah. they're it's not like I, I it's not a negative to say like rule no, following or anything like positive. it's a massive positive if you're in the fbi right and they're they're by the books they're normally incredibly intelligent like uh, they take curricular stuff very seriously yeah. so i didn't know this but apparently a lot of um fbi agents are mormon because wow, they just recruit that. from that place well, also the missionary work, they normally speak more than one language because that's part of part of their upbringing well. again. Yeah. Exactly. It's, you learn the language on the country that you're picking to go on a mission on. That's crazy. I mean, that's cool. You see what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. that's one of those things that is talk about like a, <laughs> someone giving you a purpose. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, you, you have to pick like, this country I, I, and then learn the language, right? Yeah. I posted this today and I thought it was neat not going off the subject that we were talking about with 
being a father. It says, you wouldn't be who you are without all the difficult times. Be thankful even during those trials. You know, and so no one wants to be thankful for the, the, the shit that they went through. And the way that I always have heard it is you can't have a testimony without going through a test. Mm -hmm. And so I, I believe that, you know, this probably stops a lot of people as well. You know what I mean? Because if you're trying to figure out your purpose, your passion, your calling, whatever, and then, oh my God, what if I picked the wrong thing? Right? Well, then you talk to people that are older and they go, that's where wisdom comes from. They're like, I picked five things so far. Like, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But that's you know? the case. You don't get that when you're young. You, you really don't because like life's right. all in a lot of ways. You're like, and especially with where AI is going and stuff, I think a lot life is ahead of us quite a decent amount. And because right. of that, it's like, well, what do you want to do with this decade of your life? And I think it's sometimes interesting when you do look at it that way. So we look at right. it that way as we get older, right? It's like as I, and it gets less and less. This is so true. It's like as I've been getting older now, when I think back to being 15, it's like, I think two or three things about it. You know what I mean? There's a couple of memories and then you go even further back and it's less, right? It's like, I remember this, this and this. And I think back 10 years and then I got a bigger, a larger list. And it's like, okay, so as I get older, as I get more wiser, now I'm looking at my 20s, a whole decade of my life as like two or three decisions that I made, right? Yeah, Is it that way for crazy. you guys? Mm -hmm. Instead oh, yeah. of like, as we're, you know, being only a decade away behind it, I'm still close enough to my 20s to dissect myself and go, um, what could I learn? What did I do wrong? But I think as you gain more wisdom and as you get older, you kind of already pick that stuff up. And it's those moments that you learned from that you remember that like yeah. made you who you yeah. are. Well, that's the and A plus B plus C equals you right. that I like to share because you are the sum of whatever you've done up to this point in time. And, uh, and when you say looking forward, Matt, you know, what, you know, it's, that's why I like the six phase meditation, it says, okay, in three years, how do you see yourself? And it could happen sooner. But then again, in three years, you may be on a completely different path wow. because of the way that things <laughs> have turned out. And especially nowadays with the, how fast everything is changing. You know, like and you said, that 10 years ago, maybe this is where you thought yourself to be, but in 10 years and you're looking 10 years ahead, it's probably not going to be that it's going to be. Yeah. yeah there's people left. right now in school and I, I feel bad for them right now. There's people yeah. in school right now that paid for computer science degrees. Oh. When you have the, the, the top people at N NVIDIA, Apple, Google, all of them going, oh, at the AI is going to do all the programming. It's more just communicating with that. That will matter. You don't have to learn the language. It speaks the language. You speak its language. And now, it's what like, did you, what did you say about the new chip with NVIDIA that they used AI and it actually created some things that went yeah, against. Yeah. It's it. way. Yeah. There was this interview with the CEO of NVIDIA and he said with this new chip that they came up with, which is a specific AI chip, like the way that it's built, it's, kind of the first of its kind other than the H100s, which were utilized for other things. But this really is just an AI chip. And he's like, the amount of compute power that it has kind of defies the law of physics in the way that we built chips before. And the only way that we came to this is using artificial intelligence to help develop the next era of what chips are. It's like 13 times powerful than the chip that came out last year. Yeah, you and look at that jump are we seeing the Terminator growth. 2 come to life? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that exponential growth, right? Like yeah. as it the, the speed up happens with technology because the ability to build off of what you currently had speeds yeah. up so quickly that it's kind of like, that's why they're saying 2020, like Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI that makes ChatGPT said, 2024 is going to be the biggest and and most amazing year in human history, except for every year after this. So it's like <laughs> wow. you're, you're sitting in that position where you're like, 
uh, everything's about to change and then just it'll change every year after this it'll get a little different it'll get a little better and when you see that exponential growth to go to okay chat gpt was trained on billions of dollars worth of chips that microsoft helped fund it a bunch of people helped fund it to get chat gpt to where it is now and then the ceo of nvidia which is the person that made the chips that were were utilized to train gpt is holding up a chip and goes this chip is eight eight to ten thousand dollars not billions eight to ten thousand dollars and it's 13 times powerful more powerful than the ones they're using actually you could train gpt on four thousand of these the current version that we have so to think four thousand that's at ten grand a chip that's not billions no it's not billions anymore and now you're starting to think you know, and I was joking with my dad. I'm like, I beat myself up all the time for not investing in Nvidia stock sooner because I knew this was going to happen. So to so to wake up every day or to wake up after they show that chip off and go, oh, their stock now just jumped 50 percent. You're like, if I would have invested yesterday, I would have just made 50 percent more on my money. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to change because just like Sam Altman has said in interviews, we're not moving to a place where gold is the standard for currency or money is the standard for currency compute power will be the standard for currency was it you that shared uh i saw this meme where it had a chart of three items yeah. bitcoin yep. gold and uh computer no, i'll chips. find it and pull it up on here if you yeah. guys want to just talk for a second but it yeah. it is insane yeah it's it's grown exponentially in such a way that just like you guys were saying it's like if you were to guess what the next three years of your life would have been like okay first of all go back three years we're just starting covid right or we're having covid we're doing things so even that was like oh what the hell is this right and then right. on top of that now you have this exponential growth in technology that seems to have happened overnight um which you know is decades in the make making but it feels overnight sometimes because you're right. sitting sitting in these positions where you wake up every single day and it's like hey this has changed. This has changed. This industry has changed. It's like, damn, it's just insane. I finally found it. Yeah. I, uh, I'm looking I, at it right here. Yeah. It's it's like you see the the gold go up and your know, Bitcoin doing its own thing. Or I mean gold gold, gold, gold is, is being is, is flat. flat. I, I meant flat. I'm looking at the gold. Right. That's why I said that. <laughs> and what's the one that's going above everybody? NVIDIA. Yeah, oh it's insane. Oh my gosh. Matt, there, I got it on the screen this, now. But yeah. when you but said this is the timeline, me, you guys. Yeah. Go ahead, Dad. When you I, I have it on the screen. graphic to me, it's my number one graphic that I share with people that are pitching me on crypto right now. They go, Are you well, in Bitcoin? Are you in cryptocurrency? I go, No, are you in NVIDIA? And then I send them <laughs> the screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's insane because when you like look at it and you see the value changes and you see gold being pretty consistent, dipping a little mm -hmm. bit and then going up a little bit. And then you see Bitcoin going through these ups and downs because of the fluctuation of the market. Right. What you're right. seeing with Nvidia growing leaps and bounds like it is, is a changing in dynamics of what we deem valuable. Because oh. because they have never seen this amount of growth except now they own gold and everybody needs it and they're the ones it's it's the joke but it's like back in the day when their the gold rush was going on there was a joke to be like instead of being the person picking gold you should be the person selling the shit to the people that are doing the gold digging because that's where the money is and video sells the tools this is this is a fact you can look it up on wikipedia the first millionaire in California was people that were providing the tools to the people digging for gold. Right. Yep. So everybody's sense. so excited about <laughs> AI and the opportunities. And then it just so happens there's only one company that really exists right now. And they almost have a monopoly on these things. Like the other chip manufacturers, their chips don't even, they don't have CUDA. So they don't actually work for fucking AI to a certain extent. And so they have like a monopoly on this technology and then they come out with a new version of it. And guess what NVIDIA is also doing, you guys? This is another one of those crazy things that's going to make this jump higher. If you guys don't think that they're internally trying to make AGI themselves outside of just giving the selling the shit to Apple and to everyone else, you're wrong. They have full yeah. well intentions of training their own artificial intelligence systems and selling those too. Well, so, well we know that these chips were just released 
they're not so released know, yet but yeah, this is just yeah. evaluations based off the announcement how would you how would you test so, an ai chef right building an ai <laughs> yeah well like i was even saying to you it's like it'll get to the point and sam altman was saying this it'll get to the point where uh we'll just be we'll have an ai that's so intelligent that it will just go to us like even these chips and go, not only here's how you build them, but I need you guys to build them for me so I can do this. Like, I don't have the compute power to figure out the meaning of life. So now you need to build more of these computers and here's how you build them. And now we become, I've used this analogy. If you look it up, the ants and the aphids. Yes. Um, in the animal kingdom, ants protect aphids because aphids keep pollinate pollinization in a way so the ants can consume it and bring it back to the colony. So there's this, there's this creature that's smaller than them that, that exists that they could eliminate in a heartbeat, but they don't. And the reason that they don't is because they have a symbiotic relationship. In our right. situation, at least in the beginning, AI will have to have a symbiotic relationship with us where it's going to have to, it's going to need us to build the things to take it to the next level. And it's going to ask us to do that. And we just have to align it in a way where it's not making things maliciously because it will also <laughs> know exactly how to manipulate us. So <laughs> Terminator two, again, it is right here because <laughs> wasn't it, uh, they tried, they had to come back to break the chip. That was the, um, the impetus behind Skynet and the development of the, uh, Terminators who eventually yep. were able to think of themselves. It's, you know, okay. Yes. This was a movie that was created years ago. And look what's happening today. Well, I mean, Dune's out right now in the world. And there's of Dune, another one is Dune. Yeah. yeah. In the world of Dune, there was an uprising of AI and the humans won. And that's why there's no computers in the story anymore. Is that humanity had to actually outlaw thinking computers because they tried to eliminate us in that storyline. So we had to just get to a point where like we have to figure out another resource. And it just so happens to be like the spice on their on Arrakis. Yeah. So it's like, okay, that's the new new thing that we're going after. And he uses that as an analogy, of course, for oil and those types of things that we're willing oh. to destroy tribes of people for the resources that's on their land. It's similar to Avatar, exactly. right? Or, like Avatar or is I the robot. same story. Yeah, iRobot's an interesting one. I love talking about that because that that is the easiest way to explain aligning to people, right? Because yeah. the opening of that story happens where like a, a a uh, person drives off the side of the road and goes into the water and a machine jumps in to save him. And it looks at the man that did it. And then his daughter in the back and it calculates that the man in the front seat has a higher chance of survival than the daughter. And he grabs the dad and brings him to the top, saves his life and lets the little girl drown. No human would make that decision. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be but based off calculations, it's going, he has an 80% chance and see it. She has 10. I need to save him because 80% is better than 10. And that's a mathematical decision. But a human being would go, I need to save her because she has so much more life ahead of her. Her dad would want me to save her. There's all these emotional aspects that come into it wow. for us. Deep, deep. Um, and that's the difference between emotional computers and not, right? Because mm -hmm. you could pass a lot of those Turing tests now with machines, but. Yeah. And, and then when we were talking through this uh, whole podcast about purpose, how fast can something change? Because Craig brought it up. It, it's a, it's a you know, your purpose is a little different than you get a job and then your purpose is a little different than you mm -hmm. find a relationship right. and you get married and your purpose is different. Then you have child, have children, and then your purpose is different. And it's like, so we're all talking about this, but how fast can your purpose change? If all of a sudden your environment, your culture, everything changes, how fast can your culture change? Yeah. I mean, so, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and one of the things that people don't realize is that, you know, a person that never, ever likes sports, all of a sudden has a child that as it's raising gets excited and they believe that they're what they want to do in their imagination is become a professional athlete. Don't you guys find it unique that not all parents, but the kids that really have incredible deals go, I can't tell you all the sacrifices that my parents did for me to get me here. And, and so, you know, it showed that Caitlin Clark that, you know, now there's now after she's broken all these records, even 
um, Curry's record, you know, now she gets to go into the 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 last sixteen teams, right? The 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 uh, the oh, March the NCAA Madden, tournament, yeah, March Madness bracket. Uh, she's never won a national championship. Well, she's not a new basketball player, so that means that she's been in other national championships that people beat her. So now she gets to go into another one with that one thing missing. You know, I I would not only like to win the national championship, but I would like to be the MVP of the tournament. So isn't it crazy that you can have one purpose, one passion, one calling until one day you look up and you go, okay, I, 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 I achieved that. I achieved yeah, that. Now it's, what? it's a different feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Right. Now what? It's like, <laughs> but it goes back to what yeah. you were saying earlier, even dad, where it's like, you have to find a way to fall in love and have the experience be the pursuit and not so much the experience be those other things, right? Like the accomplishment right. of things. Like the more you attach yourself to your accomplishments, the less you're going to want to engage, I think. Because, right. well, I think it shuts down your mind on another way too, Matt. Um, you know, in my career of all the stuff that I did, it was just one, one award, one accolade after another, after another, after another. And I think that everyone would agree if you've never been that kind of person, that watching someone win an award, win a Grammy, win an Oscar, <laughs> Uh, win a Tony, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, you know, win an Emmy. We all look at these people and go, wow, that's the pinnacle. Um, then then immediately it's like, well, I need another one. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's like because, because hitting those things um, are not, uh, it's a moment. It's a, it's a happiness. It's a, it's a celebration. And it's like, you know, Sometimes there's some awards that you can win where you get to have a party after it. You know, I always, you know, I always looked at any award. Why do you think they have the Oscar parties right after the awards? <laughs> because that's how fast it's freaking forgotten. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing. thing is, you, better, it's, yeah. you got the award. You better go from there yeah. directly to the freaking party because tomorrow... The clock starts over. When's the next Oscars? When's the next Grammys? There's when, a lot of what's Academy the next Award thing that you're going to do to succeed and actors with that aren't working at all anymore. Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah. yeah, it's it. Uh, that's the thing that I always find funny about recognition too. Is it's like in the me loving the film world, right? If we start going into film festivals, it, it, you know, you ever see one of those trailers where it's like twenty ribbons come up, and you're like, yes. I don't know how they won the Cincinnati small niche film festival and why they needed to put that on there as an award, but they did. Right. Right. And it's like, I, I, you know, I think like to a certain extent, it's, it's way easier to just be, uh, go off of your own accomplishments and just try your best to keep pursuing what you want to at the time. And that's really like true purpose. At least I'm finding in my life at this point is just, yeah, I'm backing you, Matt. I'm backing you. It's, it, yeah. it, 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 it was, when I look at anything that I've accomplished, it, it's um, it's it's always the next pursuit, you know. And so that's one thing that's very unique about children, all right? Because this is a living entity that you're having everything that you can do to help them figure out what they like, and and that's when you know that's when sometimes we know that parents probably you know. Um, What's that word? You know, they live through their children because vicariously you know, through their children, vicariously through their children. Right. And then you run into children that are doing things that they didn't want to do. And then it's the opposite. Then all of a sudden you find someone that's successful and then you go, wow, you know, it must be nice to have support. And it's like, what support? Yeah. They're self-learned. Like they had, right. I didn't have any parents. I, you, can you imagine me? trying to find well my dad's dead you know he died i never seen him again you know so but i can't imagine trying to find this dude and asking him to borrow me money <laughs> or yeah. teach me or teach me any kind of skill whatsoever i don't it, think you trust him to do that like is he no, anyway no, i wasn't like, i wasn't interested in ever meeting him again it, it's yeah. like you know and so 
you know, he beats the crap out of me and my mom and he gets arrested for it, gets out on bail, disappears. You know what I mean? And so it is, it's bizarre. It's like, so how are you supposed to learn from those people? Well, like uh, Mr. Rogers says, you know, just, just look for the helpers. He didn't mm -hmm. say look for the fathers. He didn't say look for the mothers. He said look for the helpers. So there are some people that 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 will help you. Uh, we just sometimes isolate ourselves so much that we don't want to take that time to find somebody else who would be willing to to feed into us and 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 share with us how to find our calling, our purpose, our passion, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean we're so taught to be scared of failure too. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like. It, what it, a lot of people see, yeah, a lot of people see like asking for help or even being supported by others as some forms of failure now because oh, weakness. weakness because of exactly what we were talking about earlier. It's like I need to be self-made regardless of what that is. And people even like make excuses for themselves to say that that's the case. Like I, I'm here to say any uh, you record this and take it 10 years from now. My dad helped me learn the things to get the success <laughs> that I got. All right. I, I had that, that is the way that it is. I think that no and matter see, what, my perception, my uh -huh. perception is, uh, I feel like I attribute to the environment that you grow up, but yes, when I look at you, um, you know, I feel like the stuff that you learned, uh, was through your own, um, your own process. Well, of course I'm not the plumber. Like you said earlier, yeah. that's that's not my path. Uh, I've tried it, of course, you know, <laughs> not the plumbing, but what you've done. You know what I mean? I've tried it. And yeah. and I think like what's so interesting about that is that I've never I've never not felt support in what I'd like to be doing. You know what I mean? And if anything, you've had to actively talk me out of what you're doing for the simple fact that, you know, I don't want to. But, you know, that I it's like, hey, this is a great place to make money. I could do this. But then it's like, no, you, you're not the same person as me. Like you need to be doing I, this. So my my Terry and my Terry and I have been watching. We like, uh, you know, like all kinds of things we love watching on TV. And there's this one thing right now called the Queen of the South. And uh, don't you guys find it very interesting that people that grow up in the mob and, and gangs and drugs and violence, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't want you to be doing this my son <laughs> you know the sons or daughters are like man you know look at this life i want to do what you do and it's I, like yeah um, right the beginning yeah. of good fellers one, like i always any love one day that. i'm a couple of hours away from not existing you know what mm -hmm. i mean it's like yeah it's crazy that that crazy world that they show it's like uh you know all of them just want more that's the personality that they are so now they're going to take over someone's territory and now the 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 fight's on and the, and it's like <laughs> nuts man real house generational lies. trauma stuff though it's the same reason that we'll always go to war is it's like if you do enough trauma to a group of people then they're going to hate you enough to keep trying to destroy you and it's yeah. like that back and forth of they're hurting us, we're hurting them, they're hurting us is enough to go on for thousands of years. We've obviously seen. So yeah, like today, yeah, we see it today. So I think it's good to keep that in mind, even in your own personal life is like, are you doing that back and forth? You don't need to be going to war really, I guess, with anybody, unless if they're kind of like, it's an interesting question because I don't have children. So <laughs> Yeah, my mom would go to war for me in a heartbeat, a right? A and I go to war for Hannah in a heartbeat. But we, it's we like, were talking, well, yeah, we myself. were talking about, um, you know, we're talking about how you change over over your life through the joy of the process of figuring yeah. out what gives you that joy, you know, and and whether the whether the effort and stuff, because I believe a majority of people in the world are are leaving living a very. Com, um, you know, just a very non-active life uh, because of complacency and and not wanting to feel uncomfortable and you know just hey I'm 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 doing average that's okay and and it, and the reason why is they just don't know how to let go what's got them to where they are and I get that I get that I tell people all the time that you know you hear people have bad things happen to them but sometimes those bad things turn into blessing you know. When, if, if 
if I didn't try to stop that van from falling off that hoist, which is really, I would have, I would have been one of those people. If I would have seen, if I could have seen myself doing that, I would have knocked myself out of my way. It was that obvious that I was in a bad, bad situation. You know, uh, doesn't make a difference how strong I am. I can't hold up a three thousand pound van. You know <laughs> if what I you mean? Could, that would have been crazy. That would have been that like would an have unbreakable been crazy, moment. Right? <laughs> yeah. And and so to think that that one moment, being at the wrong place at the wrong time, and also making the decision. You know, everybody else ran away from it. So that immediate thought of say, thinking that I could do that, you know destroyed that idea and my identity of being a mechanic. And, and so if that didn't happen, would I have been seeking for something other? Because I remember why I was looking. It was like the, the people, the government said in workman's comp that, that if I did not show them proof of either A, me going out searching for a job, where I didn't have to stand, or if I wasn't getting retrained to do a different career, then they cut the money off. Now we know that there's people all over the world that are masters at taking care of the system. <laughs> Making it's, the system. It's interesting because like in some countries, like you're saying, like the retraining aspect of it, that's going to go on a lot over the next couple of years. Yeah. Right? So. And so I just remembered, oh my God, it's, you know, and it wasn't fast. It was a total of maybe like nine months, you know, living on $900 when I was living on 3000. And so now all of a sudden you get to such a ba bad place. It's like, I don't even know what I'm good at. I don't even know what I want to do. I, I, it's like, it's crazy it, that I see people that are young people when they're saying like, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what career I want to go into. I don't know. Okay. Even if I pick a career, how in the hell do I do this? How do I learn this skill and get good at it? How do how I do know I it's going to exist in five years? <laughs> yeah. Wow. How right. do I know and, if I'm even going to like it? Yeah. No, that's and, a big one so too. I, a lot of people I, spend. I tell people I, uh, you know, I made this decisions at that point in my life based off desperation. So to think that, I did what I'm doing today and have done for 37 years based on being so desperate that I knew if I didn't do something, I'd be hope hope homeless. Well, where's the concept coming into the whole thought that when you're doing something, even being homeless, that you still can find joy in that. You could be a monk. Uh, you could be somebody that if someone looked at you, it doesn't look like you're doing anything that would be called giving back to the society. You're not like a person that's actually contributing to the betterment of the society. You're more of a taker than a giver. And it's like, to me, that's so, so much bullshit. You know what I mean? Because it's like, again, someone's putting titles from words that for you to have any worth that you got to be doing something. <laughs> that's so that's true. Funny. That's that's such a big <laughs> issue with down. people. That, that number, it's like, so who yeah. instilled that in our head that, that you know, not being mad at uh, uh, people that know us as a family, but, you know, for this constant thing that people would sit down for less than a minute with my son, Kyle. And they used to do it to Matt before he found he met Hannah. But it's like, you know, listen, we were really feeling sorry for you because you're not doing anything with your life. And I told I told Kyle this. I don't know if I told him before he left, and maybe I was going to tell him when he came back. But now it's like um, <clears throat> you're not doing anything with your life. Yeah, when's the last time you've been to Japan? And their thoughts would be. I'm never going to Japan. Well, then you listen, that's what I do with my life. I go to places you'll never go. <laughs> that's, that's why it's such bullshit to like listen to other people with shit like this. Yeah. Like, it's so bad because, and it's, it's incredibly toxic 
like from them and then you start speaking it to yourself especially if it's come from like a parent or a, a spouse or someone yeah, that you trust yeah. like you you really do start believing that you're not living your life the right way and that's manipulation like that's yeah. de facto manipulation is what they're putting you in is a position where you'll do what they want and then they can ridicule you if you don't do what they want right and because of that it just puts you like in this place of never it's like walking on eggshells i guess it's like this uneasiness mm -hmm. right and i just think it's it's difficult sometimes to identify that because sure. you have to take a you have to take a breath and take a stop and go what do i really want but even dealing with that myself through life right like i i would have people ask me like i still was making money even when i was younger i had a large amount of savings for when i wanted to get my life started my brother did the same thing like he went to japan and he's staying there for a month why because he saved his money over his life working and doing things so he could go but when you ask an outsider right and you go you know why aren't you doing the de facto life you know like the normal right. playthrough of the way this is supposed why to aren't be you doing what i think you should do <laughs> exactly yes. then then it's like odd or weird but if you imagine the people that we respect the people that we love the people that we admire all of these people made that exact same decision to take their life in the direction that they wanted to. Yeah. And that's why we admire them. The reason that the people that are telling you these things and saying you need to be these things that you may not feel or want to be is so what you can be a nobody like them. Yeah. You know, like to a certain extent, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to be mean because they're being mean, right? Yeah. Like I'm, I, that's the What's truth. Your that identity? What's yeah. your identity? How, is, how did you change the world? You know what I mean? It's like, and I love what you said about the Japan stuff because it's so subjective to the point that someone's dream, life dream, they could have spent their whole up to 60, 80, 100 years old. You can go as far as you want, right? Um, going, my goal is to work in my life to go to Japan, right? Yep. That could be their life's goal or their goal at that current time, their purpose. Everything goes into that, right? And you'd see a bunch of people go, you're wasting your time not getting a house. You're wasting your time not finding a girlfriend. You're wasting your time not doing this. Like all of these things that you, it's like, okay. And I, this is something me and Hannah joke about. I got married when I was 22. She was 19. We joke with other people in their 20s about getting married that young because it's like most people, that's if you didn't get married in your 20s, you just missed your first divorce. Like that's all you did. <laughs> oh, God. Because in a lot of ways, when you're growing and you get married that young, me and Hannah had to grow up and go through a lot of growing pains growing together, yeah. you know, because you don't know so much shit going through those ages. Oh, my God. So so now it's like, oh, yeah, I'm glad we made it through it. And we, we make it in that small amount of people and then even smaller that got married in Vegas, right, that actually made it. But <laughs> or even but if you the case, if you, right? Even if you have kids by a certain time, or you right. say, you know what? I don't want kids. It's your decision. It's what, you know, it's what is, what you feel is works for you. And right. it's the, just because most everybody in society says it is supposed to be this way. Doesn't mean it is going to be the way that you want, that you will live your life or that you will do things. Yeah, right. we talk about purpose and culture. Some cultures, oh, yeah. it's it's like one of the biggest things in their culture to have children. Yes. And so to but make you it don't have not... kids already. What's going on with you? <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking from experience or something. <laughs> what if we give you that? No. Right. No, exactly. No. <laughs> but but you know, like I I do think like it's a difficult thing because people can hijack your purpose, and you could be you could be ruling in in so many areas of your life, and it's never enough for certain people. Maybe it's your parents. Right. Maybe it's the people around you, right? Your friends, your family, where they're looking at you and they go. You got the house, you got the wife, but you don't got the kids. So you haven't done yes. it yet. And it's like, great. Once I get the kids, can I get a break? Well, no, now you have to make sure they make it to adulthood. And now they have to accomplish a lot or else you're a shitty parent. So yeah. You didn't do and a good you're job with college them. and graduate. Right. God forbid they don't go to college and graduate. And then it's like, well, or two of the three go to college and graduate. And that third one is, I didn't feel like it. And it's like, oh, failure, failure on that one. Then they go out and become an actor and, Crazy, and yeah. get become a big actor or some shit because that was their passion and actual dream. 
And then go. every time their their siblings are asked about their last name or their parents, it's like, oh, are you re related to that person? <laughs> like, that was the person that decided not to do anything but what they wanted to do. Right. Right. So, I got a quick question. I got a quick question for you guys. Sure. I don't recall a lot of things that society or the world or whatever says. Uh, this is what you should be to be, I don't know, a total person or anything. But there, I, I sit and think about, I don't ever remember ever asking myself what my purpose was. My calling, my passion. Um, you know, I just find it interesting that the world says that you need to find happiness. The world says that, you got to find all these things. You got to find love. You got to find happiness. You got to find meaning, purpose, calling. You got to find all these things, you know? And then all of a sudden you see a funny meme and it's two cartoon characters standing next to it, to each other. And it's like, uh, you know, one of them's got a jar that says happiness on it. You know what I mean? And it's like, where did you find that? And it's like, I found that inside, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like these little things that I think, uh, wow, you know what? It's just that, you know, I always find it very interesting that you're supposed to have a relationship and, you know, maybe in your, in your certain amount years or whatever, you find uh, attractiveness to want to, you know, find someone that you can make out with or have sex with, right? <laughs> But it's just like money. It was like money, politics, religion, and sex, right? right. It's these things that, uh, well, who taught you that stuff? Uh, I guess I figured it out on my own and I talked to some of my friends. You know Isn't what I mean? It's interesting to like know that like when I think of my friends, my friend group, like the friends that I've had since I was 13 years old, right? I it's It's because to a certain extent, it's not that way. Like I, it's so interesting because even when I was talking to Hannah, like I'll be in groups of guys and there's certain guys that you can immediately tell they're like not a good spouse. They're not a good, any good, good parent, anything like that. And it's by the way they talk, by the importance of what they think about. Right. Right. A lot of, a lot of eyes coming out of their mouth. <laughs> exactly. And, and so I w it's one of those interesting situations where I, once again, you become who you hang around, right? Yeah. And people don't think this shit matters enough. So we're going to talk about, like, we're talking about purpose and stuff. You will never accomplish your purpose, I don't think, the one that you want, unless if you surround yourself with people that are similar in that. Yep. And I think that that's what's so interesting about it is my friends, if I was doing bad shit, my friends would call me out immediately mm -hmm. and go, stop it. And you know what? I trust them enough to, be to go, you're right. Right. And I think people are scared to do that because they they're scared to be so much themselves that they attract that they get rid of people. But the reality is, is you actually attract people that you can actually trust and they will actually be there for you. Right. And we're yeah. so scared of of the worry that people won't like us, that we actually don't put any time into thinking about the people that will be so close to us that we can live without them. Right. right. And and that so aspect of it is yeah. like lost most in most well, cases, we, we spend so. all of our time, we spend all of our, all of our time again, beating the shit out of ourselves, right? So all the thoughts that we have where we beat ourselves down to the point where we really don't really want to have a relationship with somebody because they then will find out who we really are. Yeah, we feel like was, imposters. What, what, which was a made up imagination of bullshit that we lied to ourselves about. Well, I mean, we've all dated, yeah. right? So then what, <laughs> oh, yeah. when you start dating, there's always this game that's that's being played, right? Where you're like, you're learning a little bit about them and then they're learning a little bit about you, but you like keep all your negatives close and, yeah. and wait because you're like, I don't want them to like be scared away or anything like that. I don't know if that changes it's, as you get older where you oh, maybe no, sit down and not you go. not at all. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, just with, with Susan and I, it's, it's like, you know, okay, fine. I'm, I, I was ready, went out, we start sharing information and it's like, do I share this? Do I not share this? How, do, <laughs> yeah. how is she going to respond? No, and, you are. I'm sure there's more history there. So you're like, what oh, part exactly. of this do I share? <laughs> well, and, and I also have to look at the fact that, okay, she's had a life before me. Mm -hmm. 
And she, you know, okay, I don't have kids. She has kids. And I have to think about not just, okay, the fact that we are in love with each other and that we care about each other, but she has people who rely on her. There's she a has, priority there's, list there. There's that a you're priority aware of. list. Yeah. And if you're willing to accept the where you stand in the priority, <laughs> then because it makes a big difference, especially, all right, in my case, if you're dating and you're older, because, okay, Robert, God forbid something happened with you and Terry, you know, you have to always take into consideration that junior Kyle or that uh, Kyle and Matt, she's their mother. And yeah, you still yeah, have to a... work with her through them or with them because, I don't like where this is going. Well, what, <laughs> I, when, it's an example. It's, not it's an example happen. of being able to adjust. I can't even and, hypothetically even go there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, because I've experienced it. Yeah. And uh, that's that's the whole point is that mm -hmm. you know you you have to learn from your experiences on how to deal with people, especially Matt, since you brought this up. It's, it, you know, um, maybe what, you know, what you and Hannah went through. Fantastic. Will you go through what I've been through? Probably no. not. No, maybe probably not. you will. Possibly. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. But we take what we've got and we work with it and we. Hey, we deal if with I it. did, I'd be calling you for advice because you got wisdom. So. <laughs> okay. But does that, okay. And in that regard, and I'm going to just, does that mean that what I did was correct or what I've gone through? Is well, I, I don't think it's as, the as, decisions. It's the knowledge. That it's I the want. knowledge. And it's taking yeah. that as advice and then putting exactly. it into your own life to evaluate whether it's good for you or not. And then the person that you found or that you find is it good for them? Does it work with them? That's what I'm going through right now with Susan is that I'm taking what, what's gotten me to this point. She's taking what's gotten her to this point. We're trying to work together so that we can become, that we can be together and mutually respect, enjoy, and love each other in the best way that we can given our past history. Yeah, no, I know dad, I mean, juniors from my dad's previous marriage so my mom had to do that whole same experience you know exactly like, yeah. she was coming into it with an already she she knew she had to deal with the junior's mom that wasn't never gonna not happen so that was part of that the thing that she was accepting and all those different kinds of things too so uh you know hopefully i don't have to have that situation that you guys <laughs> I, I hope not either <laughs> <laughs> but uh i'm gonna I'm going to use the wisdom that I have and therapy to make sure that doesn't happen. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it is, pretty I was going to say, sorry to interrupt you, dad, but this is like, uh, we've already been going for like two hours and 45 minutes. So I don't know if you just want to have the last word. Cause I don't want these to go to oh. like longer than that. What do you guys think? Oh, no. okay. I, I'm, yeah. I'm ready. I, I think that probably my... this has been great. Oh yeah. 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 Awesome <clears throat> conversation. <clears throat> um, I really truly believe that all this conversation really can be summed up in one way is that, is that, uh, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And I truly, truly believe in my heart to heart that when I didn't need to know or understand something that that just really just lefted this big thing off of me because it asked me, it got me to ask, you know, how do I know that? But it really got me to question everything. If there's anything that someone said to me, you know, what is something that you taught your sons? It would be independent thinking. It would be, you know, stop listening to people that you don't even know the evidence of what they got from their thinking. You know, it is, it's like there's people out there in the world that are writing relationship uh, books that have never had a successful relationship. Uh, you know what I mean? So we just live in a world today that I just, um, you know, if there's certain things that you feel like you need to know, then you got to sort of trust yourself that I'm going to go down this path. I think I'm 
interested in this. I, I'm going to use my imagination to go down this thing and just get us, ourselves to realize a little bit of what things are. Because not only are we living in an AI world, but we're also living in the world for the first time that people truly believe and have scientific facts that they can actually, you can change your personality. You can change your thoughts. You can change the way that you loop and pattern certain things. You can do, totally, through your belief in that you can do it, you can change your outlook and your thoughts and paradigms and perspectives on everything. So now, if you don't know that you don't know and you really don't know as people that do know, and they don't have evidence, and you should be questioning everything. This is where my life has really become really fulfilled in life because it's neat to not have to know everything about everything. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's neat to get up every single day and be curious of what everybody, including your own mind, says. And, and I would say that I spend more time now questioning my own thoughts and my own beliefs and my own wisdom going, where the hell did that come from? Why is that important? Do you know somebody else that used that to become important? Because it is crazy how, how good we are at lying to ourselves and hardwiring ourselves on shit that's just not true. It's not true. You know, well, I'm a Pisces, you know, I'm a divorcee, you know, I failed in business and filed bankruptcy. It's like, there's all these things that we keep piling on ourselves where we never really ever put ourselves in a position where, what if I didn't have to know any of this shit? And what has really got me is this whole concept of unlimited wisdom and now imaginator is that again, to go back and look at a child. And a child wakes up in the morning and has only what they just currently imagined on their agenda. Do you realize that everything else is, when is lunch, when is dinner, when do I go to bed? No, this is someone else telling you that. It's like, it's bedtime. No, no, I don't, you know, it's like, it's like now all of a sudden it's like, well, why did you always put your kids to bed at nine? You know what I mean? Well, my parents and I've been looking at a bunch of people and they say that you should be bed at nine. And it's like no one ever takes the time, including yourself, to actually look at yourself and go, no one's got my DNA. No one has my thought patterns. No one has my imagination. This is stuff that I need to figure it out on my own. And that's why marriage is so important to one group and one religion is so important to another group. And one set of politics is so important to another group is because of that environment. So if you will not take the time to really discover the things that you want to do, then you're basically being steered by everybody else. One of my, one of my mentors, um, deliberately in a five-day seminar, tied a piece of yarn on our arms. It was a string and it was hanging from the string and you weren't allowed the whole five days to take it off. If you took it off, you got fine money. If you didn't show up on time, you got fine money. So he would put this giant jar and it was always full of money of everyone breaking the laws because he would set all these laws that everyone would break. And it's like, that's what society does. You speed, you don't use a seat belt, you park in the wrong damn place, you need to put money in the jar. And then, <laughs> so this is the things that we get reprimanded from that we're not supposed to do. You get bad grades, you you don't show up, you get, you know, uh, at your job, you're, you got a warning, right? You get three warnings, you're gone. And so we run around in this world thinking that we don't know why we shouldn't be the way that we want to be, but we really don't have an owner's manual. So we go through life just basically coasting and trying not to piss everyone off and trying to follow the rules and, and trying to go by other people's opinions 
<clears throat> of what they believe that our purpose should be, what our passion should be, what our calling should be. And so, you know, you steer away from that and, and you're a misfit. You're, you're a person that is breaking the laws. Why aren't you like anybody else? Why would you want to be like anybody else? So you want to find an environment and group of people that celebrate you not knowing what the hell is going on. <laughs> and that it's okay not to know. It's okay not to know what your purpose is. It's okay to not know what the meaning of life is. It's okay not to know what your passion is. And I would tell people that if you said, I don't know what I want. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what my calling is. I don't know what my passion is. Here's something that I hope will help you is this is where you get to experiment. This is where you get to put your imagination in gear and go, I don't know why those people that play darts seem to be having a lot of fucking fun. You know what I mean? I was explaining this to Ola. I think I said it. It's like, you know, today I would look at people that are my size. Uh, I don't drink beer, so maybe I'd have to drink something else. But you show up with a bunch of other people that are not serious about their weight, but they're really good at throwing darts and they make a million dollars a year. And I'm sort of asking each and every one of you to sort of challenge yourself a little bit of, man, if this is not giving me joy in the process of doing it, I wonder what would give me joy in the process of doing it until it doesn't. And then switch until it doesn't and switch until it doesn't and switch until it doesn't. Because the people that are celebrated most in this world are people that have a thought of mindfulness. They love themselves, so they love others. And they're almost got this monk quality. And can you have this monk quality and also have abundance of money? Yes. See, there's. I'm telling you, there's everything that you imagine you can make come true. But just understand that as you're following that journey and process in your imagination and it doesn't give you joy, it's not excited, you're not creating, you're not doing things that are meaningful for you. <clears throat> Why would you want to figure this out in your 80s and your 90s? So I'm saying you need to learn to listen to you. And so if you can trust yourself and keep doing that, it's like, I just love people that are just so direct and, and they know themselves. And one of my role models is my wife. It's like, she has no problems with for whatsoever. Matt's told me that he wants me to watch Odyssey, 2000 Space Odyssey. And so I keep trying to find a time to watch this movie and I'd like to watch it with my wife. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so this means I have to watch this by myself. Um, I'm not okay with that either. You're going to have to wait till you're with me again and then we'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, that, isn't that hilarious that, that, um, Man, if you're one of those individuals that that just is not moving forward in life, start using your imagination. Go back to be a little kid. And, you know, don't you think it's funny how much people get reprimanded or punished? It's like when children are like what we're supposed to be. It's like, hey, Matt, taste this. No. Come on, taste it. Not interested. Listen, I'm eating it. Doesn't it taste good? Yeah, try it. No. <laughs> and then what do we seem to be as human beings? Now it's peer pressure, right? What the hell are, there's something really weird and wrong about some of the things we do to people. So now all of a sudden it's like, Craig, test this. And I'm winking it with the eye that Matt can't see. And, you know, and Craig's like, oh my God, this tastes awesome. Come on, Matt. Now we got, you know, and it's like, <laughs> What ends up happening? I'm too skeptical of that stuff from you. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> so, so now a person, we've all seen this, right? Where now all of a sudden a person attempts to do something 
that they already knew in their hearts and hearts that they wouldn't like to do. Um, some people, unfortunately, do that their whole fucking lives. Don't be that person. Don't be that person where you woke up and you said, well, I pretty much didn't do anything that I ever imagined. But I was trying to keep people happy. I was trying to be looked at like I was a responsible citizen, you know, giving back to the community. It's like, man, be the best you and the rest of the world will want to know what the hell you're doing. Why are you so damn happy? Why, why, why is everything funny to you? You know what I mean? It's because I've learned that the things that I can't control are things I don't spend a lot of time focused on. I'm not in control of AI. So now I can be optimistic or pessimistic. If I think that it's going to kill me, um, I might just take the next 10 years off. <laughs> Or I could be optimistic and say, I don't have a clue what it's doing or how it's going to do it, but I want to be able to use this to better my life. I'm going to use this in every way that I can in a positive way, not to hurt others and just do my very, very best to impact more people, get more people to, to think, think more about their selves instead of beating up their selves. So that's my final word. That was perfect. <laughs> thank you so much thanks dad thank you Craig. wraps it up no, yeah thank, thank you Matt. i feel like we always need to have like the last word thing come out on the top yeah. and it's like just yeah. the screen, it's there like we go last word <laughs> nice little no, frame you always around. nail it there at the end oh. so thank you so much dad love you well the reason i the reason i always know it i love you both and thank you is is we know that um you know three minds are better than two and and of course i have a superpower of retention you know, so as we're going through stuff, I'm going like, wow, that's great. That's great. So there's no way I would have the final word if you guys didn't allow it or you wouldn't contributing throughout the entire podcast. So thank you. Love you. Love you too. With that said, with that said, Craig, you want to wrap it up for us? <laughs> yes. Love you guys. And you can follow Robert Hollis at roberthollis.com. Also, if you'd like to join our exclusive community, the Inner Circle, you can join us by going to roberthollis.com forward slash join. There you can join the Inner Circle or become an Imaginator. All you got to do is go to roberthollis.com forward slash join to register. There'll be lots of great exclusive content and you'll be able to participate in our special breakthrough sessions to help you move on to the next level. Please don't forget to like and share this video on YouTube and share it with others. It'll help us grow our community and reach those with ears to hear. Thank you so very much for joining us. Shout out, of course, to our executive producer and visionary, Matt Hollis Foundation, our rock behind this uh, unlimited wisdom, of course, Robert Hollis. And thank you for joining us and being a part of our unlimited wisdom. This is Craig A. Jackman. Please be good to yourselves. Be cash. And until next time, Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, See you next time. Thank, Thank you, Craig. You, Thanks, Dad. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Love you guys.